Okay, folks, let's get this thing started here. So, boom, here we go. This is the SDR radio workshop. So really what I want to do is I want to take everybody, and I've been doing lots of different things on my free time. I've been teaching um, an IoT course that has some, some software-defined radio and radio frequency stuff. It's a very complex topic. What I want to do is I want to work through with everybody and get you to the point where you can become a, a software-defined radio operator, right? Um, you can decode some signals. You can look at signals. Um, you can use some basic software. And so that's really what I'm focused on. There is tons of stuff out there. Honestly, I'm not an RF engineer or anything like that. There's people that, or there are people that are incredibly smarter at this than I am. I'm an operator and I have a background and I figured some stuff out, right? So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna teach you the stuff that I know. We do have the prerequisites that I put there. You do need an SDR. If you happen to have a hack RF, not a problem, those work too. Um, the NOELEC SDRs, the, the cheap ones are $25. The, I think somebody needs to mute, but that's okay. It might be a Jason. Yeah, it was Jason. Okay, cool. So um, the SDRs, they're like $25 is a cheap one. A little bit nicer one is $45. I've got a hack RF one, which is like 350. Like it gets more and more and more expensive. But the basic stuff, $25 worth of kit, and you can get in and you can start using this. But you need the right software, okay? So you need a, a either an Ubuntu or a Kali um, VM. Um, and you can do it in a VM. You could do it in a bare metal installation. Bare metal installation is better, but that's okay. Um, we can work in a VM. Um, not a problem. Um, you want to app, you want to update it, upgrade it, get it, bring all of the packages to current. We will go over this as we get into working with stuff. It's just that if, um, if you don't have an operating system, it's hard to install the software and all that stuff. Okay. Um, you want the big install here, which is install GQRX SDR, which is a, a visualization and a tuning program. RTL433, which is a decoder for some of the um, data bursts that we look at. Multimon, which is a different decoder specifically for pager, um, pager and continuous wave and stuff like that, but pagers, yes. Um, and then SnapD, SnapD is in red because you need that for Kali. The next line is just to turn on SnapD and AppArmor for Kali Linux. And then you use snap install URH. URH is the universal radio hacker. It is a tool to go grab. Um, um, it, you, you can analyze the data burst to actually see the message that's inside of the data burst as a, as a binary string, right? So you can see, go see all the ones, ones and zeros and all that stuff and we'll work through that okay other than that i've got a little bit of theory a little bit of theory a little bit of introduction and then we work on projects okay um so i've got a bunch of projects that are lined up we'll work through projects until uh, until we run out of time and they pull the hook and, and kick us off stage okay and most importantly if you're inside of a vm you have to um reboot the vm because um, because, because, because usually because of the snap, because you you restart snap D, um, but also because when you add the guest additions, you have to re restart the VM after that. Okay. Easy stuff. This is, I put it into chat, but it got scrambled. It is in the proper format inside of the, um, um, what is this thing? Discord. Insider Discord. I put it inside of Discord. I could do it line by line here, I guess. Um, but it's in Discord if you need to refer to this. 
and we'll work through it. So it's all good. Okay. So rules of engagement here. This is this is RF. This is IoT stuff. We have crazy cutting edge software. Some cases like URH, it is. It's engineering grade software, right? Like some guy who was a PhD in RF, and this is his little side project. A lot of the tools we use are not, they're not, they're just not really well polished, okay? Sometimes they just bomb out. It's not you, it's the software, okay? But what's cool is you can kill the software, you can bring it back. Uh, it's okay, right? And because there are lots of things, we're chaining frogs a little bit here. So sometimes some of the labs, some of the exercises, they just bomb out and um, we have to troubleshoot it, okay? Um, but really what I want is for everybody to walk away from this, being able to tune to frequencies, being able to listen to data bursts, being able to decode some some transmissions right if you can get to that it's awesome life is good right um and, it, and if i do go too fast tell me to slow down i i do have a slight case of asd so i get a little bit excited i get a little bit faster okay so this is me i clean up nice um i'm a field chief technology officer for a tech company headquartered in sterling virginia called new star security services we do huge amounts of DNS. We do DDoS mitigation. We do web application firewall. We do bot management. That's me in my professional life. Um, before that, this is me at a, in a radio hut in Germany. Um, I was 17, living in Idaho, and I was like, get me the heck out of here. And so I joined the Army. They said, OK, we think you're smart. Go take some tests. So I took more tests and they said, yeah, we still think you're smart. And they sent me to language school in Monterey, California, taught me Russian. It's been an interesting 2022. Um, and then um, I worked in signal intelligence. So I did a lot of direction finding, a lot of um, just listening to people talking on the radio, sometimes in English, sometimes in Russian, sometimes in Serbian. Um, throughout various times. Um, so I worked mission in, in U former Yugoslavia, um, right in the mid to late eighties. Um, I did some jamming, so some um, electronic attack or uh, radio frequency attack. Um, I did some man packable stuff. If your definition is carrying 110 pounds of rucksack, yes, I did that. Um, that's why it's in air quotes. Um, and then some some digital signal processing, usually around teletypes or um, I guess it's not digital signals, but um, trunking systems. Okay. Um, so I had this, you know, good eight years active duty of just messing around with radios, doing a bunch of different things, listening to signals around me. Um, finding out where those signals were coming from, interfering with the signals to keep them going from one place to another. Life is good. But then I got off active duty and I just kind of ignored that stuff. I, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, um, I'm doing other stuff. I actually went into the National Guard as an infantryman, went to Afghanistan, um, you know, interesting thing there, um, came back. And then I was in we go advanced slides i was in um a conference in goa that's nolcon and it had a it has a lot of crossover with like iot hardware hacking kind of stuff and there was a guy there who gave a class on using gqrx in order to capture signals coming off iot devices and um it reminded me of all the stuff that i used to do and i was like okay that's cool um, and I didn't really touch much until a couple years ago. And I started teaching a, a, an IoT class through ThriveDX. And we have a couple other folks 
um, inside of VetSec that teach through Thrive DX. So I teach a, I teach the IoT course usually through University of Michigan. So it's all white labeled through University of Michigan. And um, as a result of that, they're like, here, have some more SDR stuff. And um, so SDR, software defined radio. Um, have some SDRs and here's some exercises. And here are, um, I actually have one if you see my photo here. This is a little Arduino device. Um, and it's got this thing connected to it that's actually a little transmitter chip. So we started sending signals like that. We started using SDR, capturing my car keys. Um, and I said, okay, well, what else could I do with this thing? Um, and so I found a bunch of different decoders, found a whole bunch of other software, really started playing with it and figuring stuff out. So I got a hack RF1. Um, bigger frequency range than these SDRs, and we'll talk about that. But it's kind of, and it's and it has better reception. I got a porta pack. I've got it here on my desk. It's like this. It is a hack RF one, so it's an SDR. It's got this housing. It's got um, buttons, so you got a Game Boy controller. You've got a dial here um, with a push button and Inside is a hack RF, so it's got the same connectors and everything. Um, so I got one of those things, started playing around with it. It also has the LCD and a bunch of applications for grabbing signals, sending signals. It's a fantastically good way to have the FCC come knock on your door. Okay. Um, then I got an Ubertooth One. These guys. It's a similar thing. It's not an SDR. It's a software controlled radio and it's only built around Bluetooth. So it has all of the Bluetooth stack that's implemented inside the device. There, I'll pop it open. Um, but it's so that you can eavesdrop and interfere on Bluetooth transmissions. Okay, I got a yardstick one, which is a similar thing. Looks exactly the same. Um, but it's used for, it is also a um, software controlled radio uh, where you come in and you tell it what frequency, what modulation do you want, what your uh, signal you want to send, all of that stuff. And then you can craft messages that you send. So it's more like a, it's a radio dongle, not a software defined radio. Okay. And then I went really crazy, um, started uh, operating my own little SIGINT operation here, signals intelligence, um, operating my own SIGINT operation out of my house. Um, yeah, and that turned into this workshop. Okay, cool. So what is SDR? There's a saying, there was actually a product, it was like Floor Wax in the UK, and their motto was, it does what it says on the tin. SDR does what it says on the tin. It's a radio that is actually made of one little hardware piece and a whole lot of software. Okay. And by that, what I mean is the radio dongle itself, all it does is what we call an analog to digital converter. So it takes samples and there's a sample rate, right? So how many... How many samples per second are you actually taking off the radio? And it converts that to digital. It actually converts it to a, a stream of arrays. It, and, and then you can write software over the top of it that manages those digital arrays as it comes in. Right? So that the radio dongle itself doesn't do a whole lot all of the functionality is built inside of software. And because that data is an array, an array, an array, right? It's a stream of arrays, actually a couple of arrays. Um, you can use Python pandas over the top of it to actually manipulate things. So for instance, you could use a Python pandas operation to say, if the noise, if, if the signal, 
that's coming across on a particular um, on you know this particular chunk of spectrum is not above this certain amount, go ahead and change it to a zero. And that's how you remove all the noise. Right? Um, the software does everything. I've got it here. So it does demodulation. So demodulation is how you take this, the actual data that's on that signal and break it down into um, a series of, of, of ones and zeros. Okay? So it's just like we have modems. A modem in your house that connects to the internet is a modulator demodulator. So you modulate the signal, send it across the wire, you receive a signal, you demodulate it, and deliver it as data. Right? So the software does all that. The hardware just says, here is a chunk of the radio, the radio frequency that I'm listening to. Okay? Does digital signal processing, which is understanding the demodulation and going from that raw data into here's a string of ones and zeros. And then it does data decoding, or the software does data decoding. Sometimes, sometimes you have to help it out. But the software does decoding to take that stream of ones and zeros or binary data and then get some kind of understanding, like, you know, like one, one, zero, one, one, one. What does that actually mean? Right. And it might convert it into ASCII. It might usually not. It might convert it into hacks, maybe not. It might do bitwise operations, most likely yes. Okay, but it will actually take that and turn it into what's the data and the right format and the right structure that you need to actually get information out of that. Okay, everybody tracking so far? Okay. I know this is the theory side. This will come in come in handy when we start actually working through things. Okay, so this is the NOELEC SDR. They have a bunch of these things. They all are the same. Okay, they have a bunch of different models. Um, let me exit out of that. They've got a bunch of different models, and this is a little bit older. Um, this is a little bit older web page. You'll see it was two years ago. They don't change that much. But if you look down, there's like Here's a model, here's a model, here's a model. They're all kind of the same. They have three basic form factors. So they've got these guys here. And you see them, this is a this is a kind of this square, elongated square thing. They have a aluminum housing, and the connector that they have is an SMA connector. Okay. It looks like a lot of your Wi-Fi kit, but it's not. Um, because it's an SMA connector. So if you pull it up apart, I'm going to pull mine out here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a second, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, So this guy here has got a SMA connector. So it's got a screw on the outside. Okay, And if you pull this off, right, so this is my hmm, no lack, SDR, USB on one end, SMA on the other end. Um, and if you look inside the connector here on the cable, I'll have to hold my hand here so it focuses. You see that? It's got a pin inside. That's an SMA connector, okay? So that you have to have that pin. And then here in the, uh, the device itself, it has a SMA connector. So it's got a little hole there in the center. Okay. Now, my Ubertooth one here is the exact opposite. So this is called a RP SMA, a reverse polarity SMA. And you see, this is the antenna there, the antenna base. And eh, if it'll focus, come on, focus. There you go. So that antenna, the connector on the antenna does not have a pin that's there. Okay. Most Wi-Fi kits. So most of your Wi-Fi routers and stuff, they have antennas. Most of them are RP SMA. Okay? The connector here on the Ubertooth One, you, know, you can barely see it there, but it has a pin in the center. 
Okay, so you won't take this because it has a pin and connect it to this antenna connector because it has a pin. No problem. You'll look at it and you go, what the heck? But it is a very common mistake to take this, which is a SMA, and this antenna, which is an RP SMA, and there's no pin between the two of them, and you connect it up, and then you're like, my antenna isn't working, right? Because there's no pin, so it doesn't actually connect. So keep that in mind. Most of the antennas that you get are for Wi-Fi, reverse polarity. For SDRs, they're, whoops, that one doesn't work. For this one, they're regular SMA connectors, okay? And just remember, there has to be a pin involved in there. So I've got a bunch of different antennas. This one came with my, with my um, NOELEC SDR here. Um, and it looks like this. It's got a base station. This thing's magnetic. It's got this little antenna here that screws off. So there's a little screw point. I've got this funky whip antenna. I've got a bunch of other antennas. Um, it's got a cable here. The cable has that SMA connector. All I got to do is connect it up. All right, and screw it on. Um, for my porta pack, I've got another antenna here. This guy is uh, like a 900 megahertz, um, like a cell phone, or a, I use it for pagers a lot. So this is the right antenna for a pager. Same thing, it screws off, right? And you look here, it's got a regular SMA connector, screws right on. I've got another, I, you usually buy kits and they have a bunch of different antennas. This is my Hack RF1. Looks like a, it's like you see hand for scale. It's a little bit bigger than a, than a card, you know, box of cards. Um, and in this case, I've got a SMA connector and I've got this antenna. It's an, it's a telescoping antenna, right? So I can extend it out and I'll extend it to match whatever frequency I'm listening to. And there's a better, oh man, oh, question. It, can you ask questions in the, in Discord? Okay. Is it better to ask them here or are you monitoring both? So asking questions here, I can see them better because I, I have two monitors, but it, it's better to ask questions here. Um, so the question is, is there a difference between SMA and coaxial? Not really. They're, they're connectors, right? Connectors are connectors. And in fact, if you just go on, yeah, size, that's, that's it. If you go on just Amazon, you can buy, you can buy connector kits that will convert from one connector to another. Okay. The, the cables themselves, mm, you know, a cable is a cable. Some have more resistance, some have less. It's really just a matter of form factor. They all function as connectors. You just have to make sure that you have the right connector to attach to the right connector. Okay. Cool. Um, let me go back in. All right. All right. All right. That's another. Okay. Cool. So this guy like this, like this. The one caveat here when you deal with SDRs in your computer is this mounting base has a really strong magnet. So I have a metal computer case that I just slap it on. Don't put it on your hard drives. Okay. Metal connectors bad. Yeah. Don't, don't slap it on your hard drives. I haven't noticed that it, that it, um, crushes my, uh, crushes my computer yet but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Um, so there's that. I have another one actually, but I've only, I got like 12 or so SDRs. Okay. So, um, this thing is the other type of NOELEC SDR. Okay. So this is, this is the form factor here is what they call the mini. Um, and it's got a, like a harder plastic sort of thing. 
Um, and this is this is what you get for the twenty five dollar one. The square uh, aluminum one is the forty five dollar one. So this thing has a connector called an MCX. Okay, uh, and that is this is the antenna that I got with it. So same thing, an antenna base. Um, let me try this. It is magnetic. Okay, it is a magnetic base. Uh, but the same thing, it's got the little screw here so you can take the antennas and, and change antennas and move them around. Um, and the connector here is, it's just like a barrel plug. It looks kind of like a power supply. And I just have a, there's just a random, well, not so random, but there's just a hole um, on the body of the SDR itself. And this thing just pops in and there's a little bit of a clip a little bit of a, a spring activated clip inside that will hold it in, okay? Um, these things work just as well, okay? I've got another one, it looks just like this, um, that has, it came with a um, remote control, which is kind of cool. The original SDRs were made as, as TV capture cards, okay? So you take, you take these things, you plug it into your computer, you load up the software and you could watch TV, like old school TV, not cable TV, but like old school with the rabbit ears and stuff. You could watch that on your computer and you could um, record stuff on your computer, right? So you could digitize all of this, this TV stuff and save it as an MPEG or a WAVE or, or whatever it was that you, uh, that you wanted. Um, so you could do that. And that's what they were made for. But then some smart people said, hey, wait a minute. We could take these and we could use these as lab equipment if we had the right software, right? So we could troubleshoot what our radio signals are doing. That's cool. And then some even smarter people said, well, what if we were able to grab all of this, these data burst transmissions and decode them? Could we do things like, hack into people's garage door openers and it and if it's an old school garage door opener it's amazingly easy if it's somebody's old school car keys with the with the remote access um or they call them uh, keyless entry systems yes you can do that so people started to switch to rolling codes so they would have a code and then they change it each time that you press it and so that code would change so you um so it's a lot harder to do, but you can still lock people out of their out of their cars because because it, they they get out of sync with the with the um, or their their keyless entry system gets out of sync with the vehicle. Um, so you can lock them out in some vehicles, not all. Okay, so that's my crazy SDR collection. I want one more thing here on this this no elect site. Um, and this is Noelec. Uh, Noelec is the company and they have NESDR. So it's Noelec Software Defined Radio. And you'll see this column right here is the frequency range. And that's incredibly important for us because, because yeah, it, like it's a frequency range. And if things are outside of your range, you can't actually listen to them. Okay. And so most of these are 25 to 1750 megahertz or 1.75 gigahertz. Right. And you'll see they've got a couple that are 55 to 2300, but you know, they're all kind of in that area. Um, they also have, um, let's see, I had an idea there. I lost it for a second. Okay. Um, yeah, right. So there's a frequency range. You, you have to be able to listen to it. Now, all of these are listening only. So they don't transmit. So it's really good. Um, it's really good for experimentation because you know that you're not going to, um, you're not going to, uh, um, have the FCC show up outside, right? You're not going to actually interfere with anything because it's all passive, 
passive monitoring of frequencies. When you get to the hack RF, yardstick one, Ubertooth one, my my uh, porta pack here, they actually can transmit. So you have to be smart enough to stay out of jail. Okay. All right. So basic stuff. Frequencies. Okay. Frequencies is measured in cycles per second. Okay, so if you imagine this radio wave and it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down, the number of cycles per second is called a hertz. One hertz is one cycle per second. And so we measure it just like we do bytes, gig or, or bytes, bits, a uh, bunch of other things where we have one kilohertz is a thousand hertz. One megahertz is a million hertz. One gigahertz is a billion hertz. Okay. There is one caveat here. Um, officially, it's a little K because a big K is, is degrees Kelvin. The only people who will mention this are pedantic, toxic folks if you make a mistake and you put a capital K. Okay. But understand, it's a thing. Um, but keep this in mind. Now, normally when we talk RF um, and a lot of these devices, they're something from like 25 megahertz to 1,750 megahertz. 1,750 megahertz is 1.7 gigahertz. Okay, so you can do the, these calculations in your head pretty quickly because we're all IT nerds. We understand, we understand this kind of stuff, okay? The other thing that you need to know is frequencies and modulation. So in this case, you've got this visualization up here. This is your radio signal, right? And so it normally has, it goes up, it goes down, and that's one hertz right? or one cycle. And so your frequency is how many of these up, down, up, downs in a second does that electromagnetic pulse take. Then on top of it, they'll actually go pack a signal. In AM, what you'll see is they change the height of the signal. And that's how they actually encode and transmit whatever data, whether it's voice, whether it's a digital pulse, whatever it is, they'll change that amplitude or how high that wave goes. Then at the bottom, you have frequency modulation, where they change the frequency in, in, when they modulate that data and pack it on the signal, okay? You can actually see these inside of your SDR, okay? We also have a thing called phase modulation, which is, is this wave, it's like calculus, okay? Is this wave going up, then we'll go the opposite. Is it going down, then we'll go the opposite. That's phase modulation. Don't worry about it. Worry about AM and FM for the time being. Most cheap um, cheap data things, like my little Arduino transmitter, like, I think you buy like five, five receivers, five transmitters for $10. Like they're not very expensive. They're, they're using AM, okay? Because there's a version of AM called on-off keying, which is, we change the, the, the amplitude by just turning off the signal, okay? And so you'll see that you can actually see the difference between the AM and the FM in the waveform that we see inside of our tools, all okay. right? So having said that, let's get this thing done. Um, let's see, it's 11.35, we've got plenty of time. Let's go through and set ourselves up use our SDR and capture a commercial radio station, okay? So in order to get this thing done, um, I've got VirtualBox here. I've got a VM with Kali Linux that's here, okay? And I'm gonna go flip back to here because this is what we're gonna go through to set up. And then we will go a little bit more into the use of the tools that we have, okay? So let me start this thing up. Of course, it flips over to my other screen because it always does that. Let me let it boot up. OK, 
Okay, I could drink a coffee. By the way, in chat, right? So hook it up to your computer for satellite. I haven't gone the satellite route yet. I think maybe I might need bigger batter antennas. Man, my colleague is slow today. Okay. Hang on, it's almost booted. Okay. Um, what do you think about people walking around with flipper zeros? Not technically an SDR. It's a software controlled radio as far as I understand. Uh, but people are starting to use them for pen testing besides shenanigans. You know, I, yeah. So, so being a technologist and a security guy, um, I am what some people might call differently moral. I used to think I was immoral um, or amoral, so I didn't really have a whole lot of ethics. Um, but like everything has a purpose in life. Um, I have a different set of ethics, a different set of morals. Like if it's a tool, right? If if it's a tool that's available to criminals, well, then it's a tool that probably we should understand um, and be able to master so that way we can use it ourselves for the purposes of good, right? Software, hardware, a lot of tools like that are dual use technology, right? Just like a brick. You can use a brick to build a house. You can build a brick to smash somebody's windows in, right? It, it's what do you actually do with it, okay? So. Here I have a colleague, right? And the first thing that I need to do is I need to be able to do USB pass-through. Okay? So I take a USB device on my host and I can pass it through to Kali. So in order to do that, I have to go in and I have to install the guest edition um, CD. And you'll actually see this up here under devices, insert guest edition CD image you might get a pop-up that says, hey, you have to download the guest CD image. Say yes, okay? And then it will actually mount it, okay? And you'll see, whoops, I already have it mounted. It's right here, okay? So I can do like mount, or it's here, it's just not mounted, okay? So I just click on that, you'll see it. It'll show up as VBox G8, and it actually gets mounted, if you mouse over it, it says it's mounted in media CD-ROM, CD-ROM 0, excuse me. So I go to sudo dash i. Okay. Man, this thing is really slow today. Um, CD slash media slash CD-ROM 0. Do an LS there. You'll see a bunch of different things. So that is this addition CD. And what I want to run is VBox Linux editions.run. But because it's on CD, I can't run it directly. You'll get an error, right? So if I do like dot slash VBox Linux editions.run, it'll give me, okay, permission denied because it's on a virtual CD-ROM, it won't actually run. So I have to call it indirectly and just do bash dot slash VB Linux editions dot run. That installs some kernel modules, some graphic drivers, and more importantly, the ability for us to do USB pass-through. So we can recognize USB devices that are inside of our host. Okay, so it takes a couple seconds here. Should be done. My hard drive is really slow today. Actually hard drives, I have several. Okay, right, so here it builds kernel modules, which is good. 
<laughs> SSD upgrade. Yeah, my my root operating system is two NVMEs that are in a uh, RAID one, and my uh, home directory is is two two spinning Rust, so two like you know SD or HDDs um, that are in a RAID one. Okay, I will teach you a couple secrets in the VM settings that will make it faster. Okay, all right. See right here, running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. That's okay. Next thing that we need to do, and this is right on my script here, right, is we want to do an app get update and app get dist upgrade. Okay, so it's to the, well, I already have it. You're right. Who am I? Who am I? I am root because I did a um, sudo dash i. So I want to do app get update, semicolon app get dist upgrade. So bring yourself up to current. Right, and this thing's going to probably take a little bit. Let's see. I updated it yesterday, so it should be pretty quick. Ta-da! So I need, yeah, I'm totally cool with that. So I just want to get it updated. And the reason why is because um, the the software itself, uh, all of the all of the RF software is being constantly developed. And so a lot of times you'll go to install some of the software and it can't because it depends on this other package, which depends on this other package, which you don't have installed. So I think we're getting close to being the end, the end here. So far, this works exactly the same inside of Ubuntu as it does inside of Kali Linux. I just figured people had a uh, people had a uh, Kali Linux sitting around for other purposes. Okay, um, but you can use whichever one, whichever one. The software is the same, exactly the same repos, I think, too. Um, or or repositories, excuse me. Okay, so now I'm updated. Now I want to run the big thing. And here I am on Kali, so I have to grab SnapD. So I grab app get install GQRX SDR. So it's just app get. If you're a cool kid, you could just use apt get or app install. Um, to pull this over so I can see it. Uh, apt install gqrx sdr, which is the, the visual display and the tuner, rtl 433, which is the decoder for a lot of um, like IoT and other things, um, things around you, Multimon. ng, which is a decoder for pager traffic um, and some other stuff. Snap D on Kali. If you're on Ubuntu, you don't need to run that okay? because you already have Snap D running inside of Ubuntu. And you hit return. And I already have it all. I already have it all, but you'll see the same thing. You'll get a download and an installing and, and all of that stuff. Okay. Checking in here, how's everybody doing? Figure you're downloading some stuff, um, and that is good. Let me uh, let me be nice. I will throw instructions one by one into chat for everybody. So <laughs> I managed to not ruin my VM so far. Yes, um, for class. For uh, the class that I teach, I had one thing that uh, always was fun, and that was we did this install of a piece of software called Binwalk, and it uses a bunch of other programs to rip apart firmware. But if you did it as root, because it installed a bunch of uh, Python modules, 
it would basically burr, your system wouldn't boot and i was like oh my god so i've spent two years like winnowing this thing and updating the installer script just to get it to the point where we could go and um yeah i did i did a good thing there nobody else will know just me okay this one throw this here boom okay once you've got that then you need inside of kali you don't have to do this inside of um, ubuntu because it's already there but you have to turn on um snapd and app armor so it's sudo or i'm already there uh system control enable now snap d and app armor okay i already have it uh, but that turns on those services because you need those because we're going to be using snap here in just one second so i threw that into chat and then the last thing that I need here, which is snap install URH. You see, it gets pre-populated there because that was the last. I've already ran these on this, Kali. So it's good, right? So snap installs Universal Radio Hacker, which is an analysis program for decoding signals. OK. Um, and let me throw that into chat here for everybody okay cool now we want to do one thing and then change some settings so we're going to do control d control d close that out close this out and we're going to go here and we are going to not log out, we are going to shut down. Okay, so I closed down my Kali Linux. Here I am inside of VirtualBox Manager and I wanna go into settings here. Okay, and I actually had a note here and I didn't mention it. And that is here, what is SDR? SDR provides a digital stream, okay? Believe it or not, that digital stream, you, you can also use sound processing because sound is a bunch of frequencies, right? A high pitch is a higher frequency, a low pitch or you know, low tune is a lower frequency and the volume or the amplitude is how loud is it? So a lot of software that you can use for sound, you can also use for SDR stuff. But when it comes to USB, sometimes you have bottlenecks, right? And one of the bottlenecks is inside of our virtual box itself. If you go into the settings here for, for your Kali and you go into USB, you want to enable the USB controller and you want to use the USB 3.0 controller. And when you plug in your SDR, if possible, sometimes you don't have the choice, but if possible, you want to plug it into a USB 3 port. Right? That gives you more bandwidth because you know the USB 3 ports are faster. Really what that does is it gives you more bandwidth so that that stream of data that comes off of the SDR, you don't it doesn't get truncated. It doesn't it doesn't have congestion. You can actually get more of that that data stream from the SDR into your virtual machine. Okay? So you want to make sure that you turn this on to USB 3.0 controller. There's one other trick to Kali that I'm teaching everybody on the planet, if possible. If you go into storage and you go into the controller here, you have a SATA controller. There's a little option down here that says use host IO cache. If you turn that on, 
one of two things will happen. One is um, Kali Linux refuses to boot. <laughs> just laugh, just, just laugh, shake it off, go back, turn this off. If Kali Linux boots, and usually it's it's if you're in a um, if you're running VirtualBox and you're on a Mac, it seems like Macs have the most problem with this. Um, if it boots, what will happen is that it's now using the I/O cache for the SATA controller. Basically, your hard drive gets four to five times as fast. So that whole apt-get, update, upgrade, all of that stuff gets gets faster. But if it doesn't work, then the whole VM just doesn't boot. It, it's pretty. It's a pretty quick, easy fail. But um, I've had students where they have they haven't touched their Kali for like two years. They've got a two year old Kali, and I'm like, uh, you got to speed up that hard drive for a Kali and able to get it to um, actually upgrade because ain't nobody got enough time in their life to wait for that thing to upgrade. Okay. So once again, USB. Enable the controller, use the USB 3.0 controller, and you are good. Now let's boot this thing. If you are just using a bare metal, uh, bare metal operating system install like I am, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Literally, the drivers for the SDR are built into Linux. You plug it in, not a problem. Life is good. Okay, But you still have to install the software. Okay, um, I've got a Kali that's up. Hang on, I gotta log into it and then I will drag it over for everybody. Okay. This part comes with a caveat or a warning. And that warning is that what we wanna do is we wanna do this USB pass through. Really, really simple, but you can cause yourself problems, okay? And you'll see why here in a second. So don't spurious click, spuriously click on places where you shouldn't be clicking, okay? Now, what you can do now that we have the guest editions that are installed, we have, um, we've installed the guest editions, we've turned on the USB 3.0 controller. If you go into devices, scroll down to USB, and you'll see USB settings, and you'll see all the devices that are connected to your computer. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to collect devices and, and, and let go of the click. Okay. You can do devices, hold it, USB, da, 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 da. but then wherever you let go, it enables that. Okay. And if you go devices, USB, and you go down here and you pick, um, here is my, um, microphone mouse off of it, you can actually, a, US, a USB device can exist in the host or it can exist in a guest VM. It can't be in both places. So if I go in here and I say, okay, take my microphone or my speakers or my keyboard and pass it through to the VM, I basically drop myself into the black hole because, um, well, if I do it to my microphone, you can't hear me anymore until I pass it back. If I do it with my keyboard, then how do I go in and disable the keyboard? If I do it with my mouse, then right. Basically, you lose control of your VM. Okay. So well, you want to be very careful. Click devices, let go, navigate the tree, USB. And what you should have, if you plug in your SDR, and uh, I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to put my antenna here, flip my SDR, and I'm going to plug it in. Okay, so my SDR is plugged in, and if I go here, devices, USB, I should see something like that. So it says Realtek RTL 2838UHIDIR. That is your software-defined radio, okay? Um, and that SDR uses a chip. It's made by a company called Realtek. Realtek makes a bunch of um, like network cards, um, Wi-Fi adapters, Bluetooth adapters, and a lot of their stuff is RTL, 
Like that's their abbreviation. And in this case, there's a specific chip that makes all the SDRs work. And it's this RTL2838. So it's like the 2838,000th whatever chip that they've made. So you want to take that one and you just, you go like this and you click it and the menu disappears. If you go hit devices again, go navigate the tree, you'll see that that real tech is actually checked. Okay, let me check back in chat here. Whoops, I answered the Discord. BNC, okay, 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 okay. Cool. Okay, um, did I need to answer something there in Discord? Or are we okay? All right, I think we're okay. Um, so now that I've got this thing passed through, I have to check and make sure that the operating system recognizes it. So there are a couple things that I can do there, right? One is sudo dmessage, right? That shows you all the kernel messages. If you're not a, a crazy Linux head like me. And um, let me put that into chat here, sudo dmessage. That shows you everything that's going on with the kernel, including drivers. And what you'll see here is, Da -da 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 -da. If you go up to here, right, new high speed USB defined device number three using XHCI HCD product is an RTL2838 UHIDIR. Cool. Oh, and then VVD USB, that's the that's like the driver for the for the SDRs. I found a real tech reference device design. Hey, I'm gonna try and pass it to the software. I've got all this. I registered all these different modules, right? Uh, registered a software radio zero. So there's a slash dev slash software radio zero that you can use to direct access it directly. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. That looks like it's there. We recognized it. The other thing that you can do is LS USB. That shows you a list of all the USB devices that you have. So let me put it in chat here, LS USB. It's just like LS, right? So you know there's a LS PCI. She shows you all your PCI devices. LS USB lists all of the USB devices that you have on this particular um, operating system. And right here, you'll see this. There's the manufacturer, which is OBD8, and the device ID, which is 2838, OK? Um, so that's like the, it's kind of like Mac addresses where you have the, like the first part of the Mac address is the manufacturer. And then you have the, the actual like device specific thing. In this case, this is the model number of the, um, of the, uh, device and it's a real tech semiconductor corp, blah, 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 blah. All of that stuff. Okay. Then. If we did everything else right, software rise, you can go here to applications. And I think it comes down here under wireless attacks. Yeah, you'll see GQRX. You can also just run it from the command line, GQRX, right? Give it an ampersand, um, but I'm gonna pretend I'm a GUIX here today. So you can also go up here, GQRX. Boom, run it and takes a second. You probably won't get this screen. What you'll get is a screen that looks like this, okay? So this screen, that, and I can't make it any bigger, so. Um, but this is to pick the device, okay? So come down here to device scan. You might get a little pop-up that's like, hey, I couldn't find if, I couldn't find any devices. Switch to configuration mode and you say yes. And it gives you this, this screen, okay? And you come up here to where it says device and you'll see all these things listed, including like fake software devices and a bunch of stuff. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see our Realtek RTL2838 UHIDIR serial number 0001. That is the one that you wanna use. Okay. I think you could use this one, but I've had better success with this one. Same device, same device. It's just it's just a different way of how it's addressed. Like that's all. 
Um, but this one, you pick it and you say, OK. That takes you into GQRX. This is a very awesome engineering grade interface. It's got a little bit of a learning curve. OK. Um, let's see. Let's get tuning some stuff, and then we will talk. Um, I'm going to close this down, and I'm going to close down my Kali because I'm going to use GQRX natively. Okay, so I'm going to close this down. Um, you do have to give it back. Okay, and I'm going to close down my Kali. Shut down. Okay, and I'm going to go right here in my um, host operating system. I've got GQRX. If you're having problems with the whole um, the whole Kali and doing the USB pass through, there are SDR tuning software, or there is SDR tuning software for Windows. The one that a lot of folks seem to end up using is SDR Sharp. Um, but it's Oh, it's airspy. It is bring it into chat. That is um, SDR sharp, um, sharp like 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 hashtag or like pound sign uh, because it's made for um, C sharp or it's made in C sharp. Okay, similar functionality. The interface is a little bit different, but it gives you the basics of what you want to do. Okay. Um, so this is this is um, GQRX. Let me make sure I have the right device here. Okay, so I got my Realtek 2838. Say okay. This has a steep learning curve. Okay, what you want to do is you want to come up over here where it says frequency, and this is in kilohertz. And you'll see above it, it's got a number. So I'm set right now is 929.612 uh, kilohertz, which is 930 megahertz. So that's the frequency I'm tuned to. What you want to do first is you see this receiver options. You want to make sure this is zero. So I just click here and I go zero, 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 zero that thing out. That is the shift. Um, and the reason there is because you give the SDR a center frequency, it tunes to that frequency but it grabs everything to the left and the right. And then inside of, like it grabs this chunk of, of radio spectrum. And then inside of that, you can move to the left and the right, and you can pan and zoom and all that stuff. And that gives it an offset from where that center is. So that's this receiver options up here that are this, this number up here in black, that's the offset. And then I'm gonna go um, tune to a radio frequency. And I think I've got 100, one, two, nope, I got too many zeros. So I'm going to tune into 100 megahertz and I'm going to change it to wide FM in mono. Wide FM is what a commercial radio station uses, right? If you want to be really cool, you could use wide FM stereo. Maybe you'll get you know, commercial radio stations and stereo. And um, take your AGC and put it on medium. This is automatic gain control. So it automatically adjusts the, the volume based on the, the signal that's coming across. Okay. Um, and I want to come down here to the lower bottom corner. And I'm going to put it on mute. Why? Because as soon as I hit go on this thing, it's going to grab a big, huge chunk of static. That's the spectrum. And it's going to um, make that noise. So if my speakers are turned up, it's going to blast my ears. Okay. So I'm going to go up here. You've got buttons. You've got start DSP, which is start digital signal processing. You've got this one, which brings up your device selection um, widget. You've got save, which will actually save 
the raw data, that raw digitized RF that's coming off the SDR. You've got bookmarks. So this is to add a bookmark. You've got this one, which is the, um, what are you? You are the, oh, that's the recording. So that you, oh, wait, this one here, the save, the floppy drive icon is to save the configuration. This one is to save the data coming off the SDR. This one turns on a remote control on a TCP port. So it grabs a TCP port, opens up and says, hey, I'm an SDR, control me and grab my, um, grab my, um, um, grab my, my SDR data, grab my digital data um, in a streaming version. That's this way you can take like a Raspberry Pi, run upstairs, turn on a, um, turn on your own listening station in your attic that has better reception. And then you can access it across your network. Um, then here's some gears. So this is the remote control settings. Um, but what I want to do is just say start processing. Okay. And what you'll see here is over here, this will be different for you because you have different radio stations than I do. Okay. But what you'll see here is I've got this thing. I've got some that are just, eh, eh. they don't change. Those are just noise. There's nothing really there. I've got this thing over here and see how it bounces around. That is a radio station running FM. Okay. Down at the bottom here of this black display, you've got a bunch of numbers. That's the frequency that I'm tuned to in megahertz. Oh, there's a data burst right there. I saw something interesting. Um, this is the frequency in megahertz. And if you use your mouse, you can scroll in, you can scroll out, right? So I use my mouse scroll. You can zoom in, zoom out okay, with the corresponding effect. And you can grab, left click, grab, and drag. Okay? So I'm going to zoom out here for the time being. Then you have this thing. This is actually the signal. And you'll see a lot of this stuff is just there. That's just static. That's just noise. Okay? And if I move over, I'm gonna, well, I'm OK where I'm at. Um, uh, let me tune my volume down a little bit. And I'm going to unmute. Okay? And I'm going to change my gain. No, other way. Okay, that's just static. You can hear it. Okay, that's why I'm muted because otherwise I get a huge blast of static. Okay, um, so that's kind of the noise floor. Over here on the left hand side, you have a dial that is this is your signal, right? So you see a bunch of static right around you know, 60, 65 ish. These, this is measured in decibels. Um, so you got like 65 decibels of static. Um, so, okay. So question here in chat, interesting spikes in waves are measured in megahertz and represent an FM radio station broadcast. Yeah. Some of these, you might end up with noise, right? So you might end up with noise. So if I tune here, you can grab this red thing in the center and you can drag it over, right? So if I drag it over here, which is cool, and then I zoom in and I grab this and pan it over. And then I say, okay, here's the signal. This thing down below is what we call the heat map or the waterfall, okay? And what happens is you can see the most frequent stuff is at the top. And basically just think of that, that's an array of this signal. This is like this static thing up here, the scope up top. Things that are higher show in as a higher, as a brighter color. If your graph is blue, that's totally okay. But let's see, your graph is all blue, that's okay. It's just a, it's just a different, you ended up with a different color scheme. I have yet to figure out why sometimes it's yellow background versus blue background. Don't worry about it. You're still OK. Right? Um, so this waterfall here, 
as things show up, they show up at the top, and then they basically age down, and you can, right, you can mouse over it, um, and you can see, like, a specific frequency or something in there, okay? All right. I'm looking at chat, chat. Let me catch up. Did anybody put anything on Discord? Run. So, question in Discord. Run URH to view the radio detected bits. Yes, but that's more advanced. We'll get to that at the end of, at the end of everything. Okay. Okay. So, what you want to do? Drag this center here to wherever you see a signal. In this case, I know it's 100.7 because I tuned there. Grab the edge, and you can make it wider or narrow. I figure my signal is about like there. See that light area is what we're actually listening to. And if I unmute it, turn my volume down, unmute it. Okay, that's an FM radio station. You can even turn my volume. Actually, I'm going to mute this thing. Okay, you can actually hear it when you hear the speaking. You can see almost the voice come up here because this is frequency modulation. Okay, so the higher sounds are are further to the right. They have a higher frequency. So you'll speak spikes to there. And when you have lower noises, you'll see the, the lower noise has a lower frequency and you'll see it over here. Okay, so you'll be able to see that. The other thing that you can do here is where you have squelch. If this number is higher, and I'll tune off here like this. Okay, if I unmute it, I've got a lot of static. And if I right use the up arrow, make that number smaller. It really depends on the like how clean your antenna is, all of that stuff. Um, but make it that number smaller by using the up arrow until that noise goes away. Right? So there it is. Noise goes away and bump it a couple more. Okay. That basically sets here is the, the like the noise floor. Anything below that, don't play it as a sound. It basically says, okay, clip, clip anything that's below that that level. As you change your width, that um, squelch also changes. Okay, so I go, okay. Um, there is a short cheat mode in life, which is this little A here. So you can say, set it to whatever the current level is plus a little bit. So there's my squelch. And if I go, you know, bump it a couple times and now I'm back to hearing static. Okay, so I bump it up, boom, you know, three, four bumps above where you can actually hear that noise. Okay, so tuning. Again, take this red line, drag it over until you get to the center of where that radio signal is. Mute this so I can talk. Look at the heat map. You'll see kind of red extends to the sides. See how I'm narrower? I'm narrower than the actual radio signal. I want to grab the end, stretch it out until I get all of the radio signal plus like a little 5%. And um, I'm there. I can. There's my radio. If you if you have a little bit of a a little bit of static still, you can come over here and you have noise blinkers. These things, if you hit, you'll see they're different levels. Basically, this gets rid of that extra little bit of static that's inside of the signal. Okay, cool. If you don't have a frequency here. Or if you don't have a signal that looks like that, you can mess around a little bit. You can go back and change your frequency here. So zero is out at zero, 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 zero. Go back here. Um, FM radio stations go from 87.5 megahertz to 107.5 megahertz. Your mode is wide FM. Okay. 
Um, and AGC, just use medium. Okay, cool. That's how you tune into radio stations. So if you can't find something there, um, go over here, zero, -wise your up, zero out your offset. So just give it zero, 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 zero up there. Um, go here and give yourself like 90. Whoops, I hit zero. 90, um, right? And you'll see there's something of interest there. I don't think that's a radio station. No, but I do have something over here at like 90, 90.9. So I'm going to drag this over. Oops. Okay. My offset. I'm going to see when you pull it outside. So there's this chunk that comes out of the radio. When you pull it off to the side too far, you'll end up with this like, here's the end of the world. There's just no signal there because there's only so much USB bandwidth. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go zero out my offset. And I'm going to go to 90.9. Okay, 90.9. Stop it. Restart it. Nope, still didn't pull it over. Occasionally it does that where it doesn't. There we go. Start. Urge. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Drag over here. There's something. That's a that's an FM radio station. So I'm going to go over and put it there. Pull in the ends. Make sure I've got all the other stuff set. And unmute it. More than tenths of a degree. Average long-term U.S. mortgage rate. Oh, that's boring news. Okay. Um, but skills that we learned here so number one we installed some stuff awesome right number two we used gqrx we grabbed our sdr and we took a chunk of the radio spectrum looked for um look for commercial radio stations changed our frequency to that radio station adjusted the width of our signal to match whatever the the signal we were receiving and put it into white fm medium agc adjusted our squelch here and we were able to listen to a commercial radio commercial radio station okay cool let's see what do we have okay what fell apart for folks what do you need help with Merge. Came up. We cool? All right. Everybody's quiet. Everybody give me a needed to add a sound card. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The radio. Yep. Downloading the English language book. English language book on what? Oh, Air Spy. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, need to add a sound card to my VM. Yep, forgot. I forgot that one. Um, good. Okay. Anybody else have problems? That's the that's the real question. If everybody's up to speed, just give me a thumbs up, and we will carry on. Okay. Just distracted. Yeah, everybody's explaining now. I got it. This is what we're here for. Okay, cool. So right now it is 1221 US East Coast time. Yeah, yeah, Pierre, you, you'll get there. You'll get there, but excuse me. Hang on, I gotta sneeze. You'll get there, but you live out in the countryside, so it's a little bit harder to get radio signals. Okay. But you have a yard with a dog. Yeah. Living in the middle of nowhere. All right, cool. It is 1221. Let's take a 10 minute break. Everybody go, you know, go bio, get coffee, get water, get all of your stuff. We will be back here, US East Coast time at 1230.
and we will pick it up. So I'm going to give you nine minutes. Go get your stuff. Come back. I will see you all then. Okay, I'm back, but you don't have to be. <laughs> so, Michael Ortiz, what are you doing? Okay, let me show you just one little thing here. Um, and I didn't fully explain that, which is when you want to scroll, you have to put your you have to put your mouse over the bottom, and then you can scroll. Okay. The same thing over here on the left-hand side, you put the mouse over the left-hand side and then you can scroll up and scroll down. You can also click and drag, click and drag. Same thing, it's just it's just a way to, uh, I hardly ever change that though, but you can change your, your noise so you can zoom in on a particular piece of the noise and then you can zoom in on a particular frequency. Okay, does that make sense? You have to be moused over the, over the right place before the squirrely squirrely works. All right, metal antennas. Okay, it's it's okay. No, you, you're okay. I just didn't. I I I didn't fully explain that. It's not you. It's me. Okay. All right. Um, one thing for our Pyrrhic here, and that is sig antennas because I think he's going to run into this problem sooner rather than faster, which is, SDR, there is a wavelength calculator, okay? And there is an optimum for every signal that's out there, every frequency, there is an optimum length of an antenna, okay? And it's really, if you think about this, there's a speed of light, and right, and, and, electromagnetic pulses that are RRF travel at the speed of light and they have a frequency. So if you take the speed of light and divide it by the frequency, it will actually tell you how far does that electromagnetic pulse travel in one of those cycles. And if your antenna is the same length as that cycle, then you can, um, you're basically more in tune with that signal. Okay. Um, in general, the lower the frequency, the bigger the antenna in order to match that wavelength because, because it's slower, so there are less cycles per second, aka a lower frequency. And so that, um, what is it? It's called the sinoid, um, the sinoid wave, like up and down and up and down. Um, that happens less frequently because it's a lower frequency. So it travels less in the period of in a in a period of of one second of the speed of light. Okay. Don't worry about that. There's a calculator. You go to the calculator and you put in like what is your frequency? 100 megahertz and you want a full wave antenna. And so you want an antenna that is 200 well here let me blow this up. You want an antenna that is 299, so let's say 300 centimeters or three meters, three meter long antenna in order to capture uh, radio waves at 100 megahertz, okay? If we change and now we're in gigahertz and we have something like um, 2.4 gigahertz, which is what? what? Uh, Bluetooth and older Wi-Fi and a Zigbee and a bunch of things use, um, then that full wave is 12 centimeters. Okay. Or if maybe we use um, maybe 20 megahertz, that full wave is going to be 1.5 centimeters. Okay, And you can use a full wave, so that's the actual length, or you can use a half or a quarter not as optimum as the full wave, but also, you know, three meter long antenna is a little bit much sometimes. Okay. But there's a calculator. I put it into chat. You can use that to kind of figure out where and how and what you're at. The way that you do it with the telescoping antennas here. So we've got this telescoping antenna. That's what? Uh, eh, I don't know, um, 15 centimeters, maybe? Yeah, 
I think that's 15. Um, but the way that it works is you find out what frequency you want to be on, and then you extend it to be that length. Okay, so if I need, say, what's that? That's like uh, 45 centimeters, okay, or 18 inches. Um, right? I just extend it or retract it in order to match what frequency I want. That's why these things are of a lot of flexibility. However, like a lot of things radio, you have to be this high to get on this ride, right? You have to understand the basics of what you're doing. And that is being able to do that antenna wavelength calculation. Okay, cool. For just listening, it's not as crucial. But when you start transmitting, yes, you'll you'll start to have you'll start to have problems. Um, yep. Okay. Um, and there are like filters and stuff. Once you get into this, there's like a filter. So a a, a high pass filter says anything uh, below this. Go ahead and cut that out. It's just mathematical trans translations. Okay. Um, moving on. Did anybody have problems, problems dealing with GQRX or tuning, basic tuning or anything like that? That is a question. Did anybody, anybody need love? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. We are in on this. Let me go back to sharing and let's get into another project. Right. Actually, it's a bit of information. There's this awesome website, right? So what did we do? So this was our zero to hero that we did. So we set up all of our VMs. We installed all of our software. We set up ourselves for USB pass-through. We ran GQRX, tuned it, listened to a commercial radio station. There are some other things inside of GQX that we need to talk about. The first one is... Um, down here in the lower right hand corner, you see this like here, this is the noise and here's our noise level and stuff, but you have UDP that turns on UDP streaming. You give it a, a, an IP address. Don't do it now. You give it an IP address and a port and it will stream UDP, a UDP copy of that whole, um, it's called IQ data. Uh, but that whole radio data um, um, that it sends, okay? Question in chat from Chad. Does this calculate the minimum length or the optimum length? The optimum length. Yes, your antenna can be too long. Yes. Okay, so it's optimum length. And the optimum length, the most optimum length is the same length as, as one of the waves. Um, and then half of that, and then a quarter of that, okay? So yes, your antenna can be too long. You just pick up too much technical term, random crap, okay? So down here, UDP streaming. If you hit this three dots over here in the lower right-hand corner, that, if you go to network, this is where I'm actually sending this. So hang on, I'll get to chat in just a second. So this says, here is where I'm streaming that that radio data to, and here's the port, and it will turn on a stream. We will use this later. So remember this, okay? Because when if we create a radio stream, we can create that radio stream and then take whatever software tool we have and say, oh yeah, grab that grab that data stream and then perform these transactions on that data stream. So that gives us a lot of flexibility as far as chaining tools together in order to actually get value out of that signal. Under recording, you give it a location, right? It's just a, it's an operating system path and it will record this signal as a wave. Okay, so dot WAV. It records it as a sound file. Cool stuff. Um, and in this case, I'm going to check this, and I'm going to go up one. So I'm going to give it IQ, this IQ recordings here. It's just a directory that I have for recording stuff. FFT is a fixed Fourier transformation, or fast Fourier transformation. 
Don't worry about that for the time being. You probably will never need to know this in your life. That's basically the mathematical algorithm that makes the scope that you see up here work. Okay. There's a pan adapter. I think we can flip this. This is this thing down here, right? So here's a waterfall and then here's a pan adapter. Right, there's our waterfall. I'm gonna switch to like that. Okay, okay. Don't worry too much on the FFT side. That's just the math that makes the display work. As long as you know that, we're okay. Okay. Um, the one that you do need to know is here's the network, and then here's the location where you're recording. Okay. Um, up here at the top, you have the settings for remote control. In this case, you've got allowed hosts. So that's a an IP just IP ACLs. You can add specific hosts that can control this. And then it will actually listen when you turn it on. It'll listen on this port for other copies of GQRX and other software that is connecting, that is remote controlling this GQRX. Okay. In order to turn it on, you just hit boom, turn it on. And now it's on. It's very uneventful. And I turned it off. Okay. So question here in chat. You can set a receiver station optimally placed and tuned and then just stream the signal over the network to a remote computer. Yes, absolutely. And one of the most interesting things that I have seen this year is folks inside of Ukraine that take SDRs and they set up, there's a web front end that you can have and it tunes into a an SDR. So it's basically um, internet streaming of SDR RF data. And that way, if you were someplace else around on the opposite side of the world, you could actually listen to Russian tactical radio um, because like none of their radios are encrypted, man. It's all, it's all, they're like, they're using foul bang radios, like, like civilian, walkie talkies, um, you can grab all of that and listen to it, even though you're on the other side of the planet. Okay. And the way that that works is this, this streaming SDR stuff. Okay. Um, there is one thing that I use a lot. If you go up here to view bookmarks, okay, this opens up bookmarks down here. And so you'll see it. It's all I've got it all sorted by frequency. So I've got 100.7 here, um, right here. And all you have to do is double click it. Boom. And my radio automatically tunes to that frequency. And then um, it tunes to that frequency. It sets the width of the signal, checks the right modulation. Like all of this stuff that's here, you can set. So in order to set a bookmark, you tune to a frequency that you like, you um, set it up so that you can hear it and everything's good, right? So you can actually receive it. And then you come up here to this little button and you say, add a bookmark and you give it a name, okay? And you give it a tag, you can create a new tag, right? Create a new tag and it's this is the new tag and I'm gonna make it an ASDF tag and say, bam, okay. And you see right here, it added it to my bookmarks. So you see all of these different things that I've listened to, like, you know, I live in Lynn. So here's the Lynn police. Uh, it's a very quiet channel. Um, I think I should get more, more radio traffic for my tax dollars. I'm going to complain to the mayor. Um, but you have other weird things, like here's a pager that we'll get to. It's muted, so I'm okay. Uh, but there's a pager, uh, pager traffic that I, that I um, listen to a lot. It has, it's not active right there. It is now. It's active. Okay, and we will actually go look at this. We'll go look at this and analyze this um, later on in the workshop. Okay, but you'll see it's coming across. This one uses what we call frequency shift keying. So basically a zero is the left side, a one is the right side, and it bounces back and forth. Ooh, this one's a multi-phase. And you can actually hear it, 
Let me make sure my volume is right here. Okay, you can actually hear these things if it will behave. This is a pretty chatty pager channel too. Okay, that's enough of that for now. Um, right. But what I did was I set it, I set my bandwidth, I went in, said, okay, add a bookmark, boom, it shows up here as, you know, here's my MGH pager. Um, and now I can just go tune to it. So I've got a bunch of things in there. I got IDKs, which is, I have no idea what the heck this signal is. Don't know. I'm working on it. I'll figure it out. Okay. Now the question becomes, how do you know? And I've got some of these that are kind of fun. Uh, like Lynn Fire, is there anything there? Ah, uh, there's no fire going on, so it's quiet. Um, there's one that's like uh, push to talk Spanish. So it's on 152 megahertz, right? So there they are. So you hear them. Actually, unmute it. It's a push to talk. So that's using FM, right? You can. Okay, so basically I've created like a eh, computer controlled radio scanner, right? Uh, but a, okay, I don't know what it is. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but you can see there, that's an FM radio. And you'll see on the frequencies, FM spreads out quite a bit like that, right? Uh, we'll see AM here in just a little bit. AM, what you'll see is, Instead of that signal kind of dancing left to right, like you see it, let me pull this down. Not sure if down. Uh, see how it kind of it dances around? You'll see AM is like on, off, on, off, and it's a very narrow spike because it's either on or off, okay? Uh, because it's all, all of it's in the actual volume as it goes up and down, okay? So I got this thing. Um, we went through bookmarks, we went through UDP streaming. I think we're pretty good for the time being. I'm gonna stop this and we're gonna go get into a little bit more knowledge here. So there is this really awesome site um, and it is radioreference.com and radioreference.com has all of the, um, it's got frequencies. So if you're a like fire department, um, it's always, fire, hospital, ambulance, um, police. They have specific frequencies that they're licensed to. They have to actually apply and get a license to broadcast on that frequency. You can't just go, oh, I want to go broadcast on a fire frequency, right? Because it's, it's designed to have limited access. So that way, all of the emergency services folks don't have, you know, Billy Bo Bob Joe trying to talk over their their radio traffic while they're talking, right? So they have a license and then radio reference categorizes all of these, breaks it down by by state, by county. I happen to live in Essex County. Um, and so you'll actually see the frequency that they're on. Let me blow this up. The frequency that they're using what their license is, and that will actually give you a ref, uh, uh, link to their actual act, their license and the information about it. Um, what's it, what's it, basically what's it used for, right? What modulation, what mode? They're, usually push to talk stuff is going to be FM, okay? So FM narrow, uh, but you can grab all of these different things. So if I just go, you know, US, pick a state, there's nothing in Montana. Um, you know, pick a state, zoom in. I bet there's stuff there. Um, but like all of Massachusetts, you got all the different counties. Here's the statewide stuff. You can go see, okay, the highway department, what frequencies do they use? Take these, mark these as bookmarks inside of GQRX. And then you can go back and, and flip through and see if you can get any any traffic off them. Okay. That's kind of a cool thing, but because it's all push to talk, sometimes you don't hear anything, right? Like the the 
Fire department frequencies aren't used unless there's a fire. Okay. There are some that are fun frequencies. Okay. And these are frequencies that devices are used on. You've got two, whoops, these two frequencies that are here. So one, and they're in red. One is 315 megahertz, and the other is 433.92 megahertz. There will be a test on this later. <laughs> no, there won't actually be a test. But remember these, because if I have a gadget, I have a gadget. I have no idea what frequency this gadget uses. I'm going to try 315 first, if it's an older gadget. If it's a newer gadget, I will try 433.92. Um, or they call it LPD-315 or LPD-433. Uh, I'm going to tune to those frequencies and see if I can capture traffic off that device. Okay. Um, there are better ways. We'll we'll look at those better ways. But those are where you find um, your keys. Um, I didn't bring my keys up. Hmm. Um, that's where you find like your keys, your keyless entry systems, your garage door openers. Um, I've got a Thermo Pro. If you see see me down here, this is everybody in VetSec is like a barbecue fiend. Uh, this is my remote thermometer. So I've got a head display and a transmitter unit. Um, that thing uses 433.92 megahertz. Um, I have two vehicles. One is a 2008 Nissan Xterra. And that one um, transmits on 315 megahertz. And I have a 2018 Nissan Rogue. That one, the, the keyless entry system is on 433.92, um, but it's a little bit of a different signal. That's where you see a lot of stuff. 345 megahertz is for um, like building alarms and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll see traffic there. Um, I haven't found a lot there, but it's there. Um, my own alarms are on, I think my own alarms are on 433 megahertz. Um, 868 megahertz, you'll see a lot of um, like building automation systems and stuff like that. So you get a lot of that traffic there. So um, like commercial real estate alarms, uh, but like all the data center stuff. So um, smoke alarms, fire detection systems, um, um, thermostats will report back, like all of that kind of building automation stuff. A lot of it you'll find at 868. 900 megahertz to 930 megahertz is phenomenally interesting for me. Um, my utility meters here at home are on 916 megahertz. Um, the pager traffic that I was showing you before, that's on like 929 megahertz. Um, a lot of things use kind of that 900 to 930 megahertz. Um, and then there are a bunch of other stuff that's like push to talk and stuff. Um, but there are ways to find this out. We'll talk about that. Okay. All right. Other frequencies, things that everybody always asks about. Um, 2.4 gigahertz is used by old Wi-Fi. So the old slower Wi-Fi. Uh, Bluetooth definitely uses 2.4. Zigbee. Um, I have a Garmin watch. The sensors for that use Ant Plus. That's on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, so a lot of like personal networking, wireless networking stuff are on 2.4 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz is the new Wi-Fi or the faster Wi-Fi. Um, and then the 6 gigahertz is a newer standard for Wi-Fi that just came out. Funny enough, the higher frequencies have a higher data speed, which is why when you go from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz, you get an increase in speed. But it's not as much of a powerful signal, so it doesn't travel as far, and it doesn't make it through um, like trees, walls, vegetation, rain, all of that stuff. So one of the things when they when they started to roll out 5G is because 5G has all these different frequencies, they kept the lower frequencies for controlled traffic and for slower data, the higher frequencies, so you know, 25 to 39 gigahertz, much, much faster data transfer speed, 
but you need to have more antennas more densely located, right? So they built out different frequencies so they could scale up, scale down based on wherever that, that phone was at, okay? This takes us to another one. This is things around us. There's this really, really awesome piece of software. I use it all the time. It is an absolute blast and it's called RTL433. Okay. And it's a GitHub project. It, so it's on GitHub, you can download it, you can compile it, all this stuff. But in most, most Ubuntu, Debian, Kali, you can just app get it. And we already installed it, so it's there. And what it does is, uh, if you look here under running, it has a bunch of different things, da, 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 da. but if you scroll down, it has all of these different device protocols. So what RTL433 does is it, you give it a frequency, it tunes to that frequency. And whenever it sees, sees, hears RF traffic, it tries to decode, is it amplitude modulation? Is it frequency modulation? Is it phase modulation? If so, how is it encoded? And do I have a decoder for that data? And if you scroll down through this thing, it's like pages and pages and pages. Last I checked, it was like 210 or so. Yeah. So 223 different kinds of signals that it can decode. And if you look up through some of these, you've got like uh, Toyota TPMS. TPM, TPMS is the tire pressure monitoring system. So your cars, as you drive, they've got a little sensor inside that uses the the rotation of the tire to actually generate electricity to power it. But it broadcasts a radio signal that says, hello, I am a tire and here's my ID and my current tire pressure is whatever, whatever it is. And it's in kilopascal switch. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, but you see for Toyota, Ford, Renault, or Renault, if you're in the UK, um, wireless smoke and heat detector. So that's a, that's a, you know, uh, smoke detector. Uh, there are a bunch of these Steelmate, Schrader. Um, there's some fun ones in here. Honda car key. Radiohead. I'm not quite sure what Radiohead is, but by God, it's got a amplitude shift keying um, signal. Um, remote controls, right? HD 680. I know these. <coughs> Excuse me. Hang on a second. Okay. All of these different things. My neighbors have, um, they've got EcuRite. Uh, I think they've got a 609 TXC. Um, but, you know, weather stations, my neighbors have them. I, I can grab all this stuff. So um, it's pretty cool. And you don't even need really to, to know what you're doing. Um, you can just run it, give it the SDR, and then it will go, it will go decode data, right? Um, there are a bunch of different things, like you can specify frequencies, and it has a bunch of tools for data analysis. And we can, uh, we can mess with it and figure stuff out. That is a fascinating question, by the way, in chat. If it, the license plate camera near my house, I do not know. Okay, maybe, probably has something. It's got to get signal someplace, um, but they might just store it locally. If you can find out, well, we'll do this with the thermostat. If you can find what model it is, and if you can find the FCC ID, um, you can find out what frequency it uses. We will get there. We will get there. We will get there. We will get there. Okay. Cool. Bunch of devices. Let's go use this thing. Okay. So number one, we got RTL 433. We got frequencies. So we've got specific frequencies. 315, 433. We start with those. Um, 
and then we can capture some of that data. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up a shell here, and it's literally this easy. R RTL underscore four three three. Boom. Oh, I don't have a. Oh, I <laughs> Uh, I have GQRX running. You can't run. You, it's a USB device. You can have only one piece of software controlling it at a time. So let's do this. Okay. So you'll see here by default, it tunes to 433.92 megahertz. It is listening to things. Make sure I have an antenna. Yeah, I got an antenna and everything. It'll take a little while, but I'll start to record signals, okay? One thing here, going back on my, um, on the, this page, okay? Where you see decoders that have a asterisk here, okay? These ones are not turned on by default, and there's a reason why. If you look down here, um, so like ant and ant plus devices, there's a reason why those are not enabled by default. And that is because they are loud. They talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. Man, I'm not picking anything up. RTL433. I should get some stuff here. Okay, those aren't turned on by default, um, just because they're just chatty. They're just chatty. They would flood out and you wouldn't see anything else. Okay, one of the things that I did um, earlier this year, if I go here, um, let's capture. Okay, so I went in and ran RTL433. I'm going to close this off for a minute, so I just control C it. Um, where am I at? Uh, make, make der, capture, CD, capture, LS. Okay, so mm, I just made a directory. I went in there. Okay, now I want to run my RTL four three three, and then type T. Okay, so if I use pipe, that will actually, uh, or I pipe it through T. That says print the output to the screen, but also print the output to a file. And that's all I did is I ran that, okay? And I ran it and I ran it like overnight and um, grabbed all this stuff that was around me and it makes output like this, okay? So we'll eventually come back and I'll have captured something, um, but it's a little bit slow right now. So in this case, what I've got is, you can see when I actually did the capture, so it was January 26th. And so I've got DSC security, and here's the ID, and it basically breaks it out, right? And it says, okay, here's my status. Um, and then it, it CRC is like a hash um, to validate that the, uh, the signal was correct. Like, did I get it all? Because when you're dealing with RF, you have this like, did I get everything and is it accurate? So it adds like, it does like a overly simplified hash at the end to make sure that uh, that it got it all. Um, so this is DSC security. And at this point I went, okay, this is cool. Like right click that, copy, go to Google, DSC security, okay. It's digital security controls. And I'm like, oh my God, these things. I have one of these in my house. <laughs> uh, like, oh, that thing, that's in my house. So I discovered that, you know, my home alarm system is in fact beaconing um, for setup, right? So it beacons every like five minutes or 10 minutes. It sends out a signal that says, hey, I'm an alarm system, here I am, and I'm okay. So there's like the status and there's a couple tample, tamper alarms Activity says, yes, I'm here. Battery, okay. Yes, my battery is good. Nobody has broken into my case. Everything's good, All right? Other ones, 
DSC, security. I think I only grabbed my security ones. Okay, here's a tire pressure monitoring system. Okay, so this is um, this is a Renault TPMS. Here's the ID, and here is the pressure, which is 186.6 kilopascals. This was in December, so it's minus 14 degrees. So if I say 1.86, copy, go, go to Google, convert. Uh, right click, paste uh, to PSI, boom. So he's got 27 uh, PSI in his tires. Okay. <laughs> oh, just wait, just wait, Patrick. We'll get we'll get fun. Keep in mind the NOELEC SDRs are receive only, so you're not going to get into too much trouble. Uh, it's once you start transmitting where you start to get into problems. Okay. Um, so that's RTL 433. Like, yeah. Okay. So I'm starting to get some stuff here. Um, I got my security. Yeah. I got a lot of my, my uh, home alarm that's called in so far. Um, one of the things you can do is because this is formatted text. You see, I've got model and I've got like that and I've got type. So if I go Q, I can do um, grep model. Uh, capture text, but oh, okay, little m model capture dot test, right? So I've got like all these things, and then I can do some other funky donkey stuff. So uh, pipe cut. Um, dash F, one, two, what, like three, dash D, space, maybe. Let's use that first and grab field two, like that. Okay. Uh, pipe, uh, sort, pipe unique. Okay. So that gives me like a list of all the things. And then I just want to grab the first pipe, um, cut dash F1, um, dash D space. OK. But what? Oh, wow. Need to be field zero. Am I like off by one? No. Build from one. I'm too stupid to make it work. Okay. Anyway, you get kind of the idea here, right? Like, eh, it's a text file. It's formatted. I will take this and give it to everybody. You, but you can use a lot of Unix command line tools. Yeah, you can find all sorts of fun and exciting things, right? So you get like Ford here. I've got my DS. DSC security, that's my alarm system. AccuWrite, so let's do, um, there are actually two weather stations, a 606 and a 609. I don't know what an Abarth 124 Spider is. Um, Schrader, which is a TPMS. Uh, Springfield Soil, which is like a uh, water or monitoring system. But you get like all this stuff, right? And I'm starting to get more, eh kind of uneventful right now is there a leading space oh yeah somebody is smart and that is and that smart person is jay franklin okay let's try two yeah oh look at that okay acs 20 you got it um what is it abarth 124 spider Copy. Okay. I found somebody's uh somebody's fiat. Hmm. 
yeah. I have no idea what it's transmitting, but by God, it's it it might have driven by. Um, so you'll see you'll see like stuff like this where people drive by, people drive by, and you catch their their tire pressure management system, or you catch their um, um, their thing. Let's go see what it has. So if we do less um, capture, and we can do a slash here, and we can do a bar. And you'll see, yeah, I got a TPMS. Okay, so it's a tire pressure system. Here's his ID, and pretty cold that day. It was minus 25. Wow. Um, but you know, 235 kilopascals. Okay, you'll see there's some Renaults. All right. Um, but I like to do this like this thing because I kind of want to get a sample of what are all the different devices that I've actually seen. Right. And like, what are they out there? What are all the manufacturers and what kind of stuff is going on? OK, so this thing is still doing its thing like this thing will go. And I like the day that I did this, I ran my RTL 433. Right. And just ran. I'm going to control C this just ran it like that. RTL 433 T capture. It defaults to 433.92 megahertz, grabs all this stuff. Um, and I ran it for like 24 hours just to see like what's around me, right? Like what could I actually find? RTL 43C, cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. It also works on other frequencies. So if I want to say RTL 433-F 315M, so 315 megahertz, or I could do 315-000000. Okay, but it's easier just to say 315M. And now it will tune. You'll actually see it tunes to 315 megahertz. You'll get a completely different set of devices. It's so cool. And all the same, it like does the same thing, does, does all of that. Um, you can also run it on 868. Um, I've run it on 868. I've ran it on um, 345. Didn't find anything around me. <laughs> yeah, Michael, you're getting to where we'll, we're actually using my Thermo Pro. My Thermo Pro does exactly the same thing. It sends 320 degrees Celsius. Um, yes, we'll get there. Do you have a TP20? Mine is a Tango Papa 2.0. Okay. All right, and I'll show you a little bit more how to do that. Okay, so that is... Oh, one last thing here that I wanted to get on. Um, and that is you can do F-F JSON and then capture.json. So if we go here and I'm here in capture, so I do LS and I want to do frequency here, dash F JSON, uh, capture.json, okay? What will happen is it will um, it will tune to that frequency. It will take the output instead of giving you ASCII text like we looked at. It will spit it out, format it as JSON, and it'll write it to a file called capture.json. Okay, that's cool. So then you can use you can use it, pull it up in in Python or some other kind of programming language. And you can do things with it. One more thing that it does that's fantastically awesome is that you can take RTL433 and you can send everything that it finds to a, an MQTT server. So MQTT server is used for all the home automation stuff. You, it's basically um, like you have your light switches, the temperature, like. You take a bunch of sensors and send them into MQTT. Well, you can also capture RTL-433, put stuff into your home automation system, and then you can turn around and perform actions based on what these sensors are telling you. Okay. So it's a really good way to like grab the outside temperature, do actions, perform actions on that. You can do a whole bunch of different things using RTL-433. Okay. And what's cool is, it's all here inside the website that I gave you. 
if you look down here, so JSON data fields, here's how it's all formatted. But then integration, open hab, right? You just give it RTL 433-F, which is what's the format that you want to put out. You give it a an MQTT uh, broker connection line, um, right? Like all of that stuff, boom. And it'll dump it into MQTT in a particular structure. You see here, you've got sensors, RTL-433. This is the actual uh, code for what you find. And then here's, you know, ID, temperature, da 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 In this case, they might have set it up with, yeah. So they said protocol, and then what channel is it on? Um, and then dumps it in there, okay? Capture thermo temp. Yes, Michael is tracking. Like he's thinking like I am. People, um, when I actually announced this in the in the Slack channel, everybody's like, well, what could you do with that? That sounds kind of boring. And I'm like, well, what you can do is you can automate things. So when your meat is ready, you could like turn on the TV and, and you could do a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, with your home assistant so that you're ready, you're ready to go eat your barbecue. Okay, cool. That takes us through the basics of RTL 433. Um, let's move into pagers. So I showed you the, the pagers inside of GQRX. We can actually decode that. And there are a couple things, a couple tools that help us out. One is the signal identification wiki. And I'll give that to you. There are different standards that uh, people use for pagers. Pagers are usually POGSAG, P-O-C-S-A-G. So we can go here inside of the signal ID wiki. Um, is really designed, Signal ID Wiki is designed for, I found a radio signal. I don't know what the heck it is. Can I figure out what it is? So if I go here to the search bar and type in P-O-C-S-A-G, OGSAG. It's really cool. It'll show you what frequencies it's on, frequency ranges that you can find it on. Um, it'll show you a picture of what it looks like inside of that heat map. Uh, tell you a history of it, how it's modulated. Important thing, it uses FSK modulation. Pogsag has different speeds, so it's got 512 bits per second or 512 baud for the, oh, hospitals still use pagers. We will get there. Um, 1200 bit, um, baud or bits per second and 2400 bits per second. Okay. That's kind of cool. So I'm like, okay, I found this signal. And let me get back into GQRX and I'll show it to you. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and I am MGH. By the way, I live in Massachusetts. There's a very big hospital over here called Massachusetts General Hospital. Okay, um, and I'm going to capture it. Mute, mute that. Okay, so if I were to blow the signal up, I'm going to scope in. Eh, that's maybe too much. Something like that, yeah? And you'll see this thing come. Right? Right, I got the signal. Show that to me. Okay, so go back to my signal ID wiki. Looks kind of like that. Okay. Hospitals do, in fact, still use pagers. And this, based on all my um, signal intelligence work, this is Massachusetts General Hospital plus a couple other hospital systems. Okay. Now, in order to decode this, what I do is I uh, tune to the right frequency, right? So I tune to the frequency and I just, I look around. I started with the signal ID wiki. If you look down at the bottom, it tells you what are different POGSAG frequency ranges and where what are the frequencies by region. 
you know, and you get down to US and you got all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. It looks like 929 is pretty good. So I changed it to 929. Um, oh, look, there's a signal tuned to it. And then nothing. Okay. Porta pack, porta pack grabs. Okay. So hang on. Let me catch up with this stuff. Um, SDRs include the Hacker F1, right? So the porta pack. This little guy right here, it has an encoder for um, pagers, okay? But it's just PogSat. Now, I had to go through and do a little bit of research. My local hospital uses a, a later version called Motorola Flex, okay? And you can actually go see Motorola Flex. Okay, so you... Mm -hmm. Right, so integrated dispatch because you get all this cool software to control it, and then it sends this out as a as a Motorola Flex. But I found this really cool website that explains how to actually do this with GQRX. So we're gonna go through it. You might not have a pager signal, okay, but you should check it out. So tune to 929. Yeah, so the distance, the distance, I'm about maybe 15 to 17 kilometers um, radio direction or radio line of sight away from the hospital. So I could appreciate a little bit stronger signal, but I'm okay with it. It's still strong enough that I can actually um, get a signal out of it, right? So if you look at, I'm tuned to... 929.6.61 ish. That's my center frequency. And you see I'm a little bit wide on the side. So I'm going to bring that back. All right, so I get just the signal. The hardest thing is you wait until the signal goes away. And then hit the auto squelch. Hit the, auto, the A button here to get rid of that, that noise floor. Okay. And now you get these things. Now, this is what we call frequency shift keying, right? And I talked about this before. So a zero is on the left-hand side, a one is on the right-hand side, and it flips back and forth at a particular baud rate. That's why you get that. That's the actual like frequency shifting to the lower one, to the higher one, to the lower one, to the higher one. Okay. Now, I've got this really cool thing that we can do with GQRX. We can go down here and I hit the double, the three dots, and I look at the network and I say this, I'm transmitting my RF to local host at UDP port 7355. Totally cool. And I have the BACL. Okay. That is the big ass command line. Why? Because it's right here. You can see it on my notes. It is crazy huge, but we'll do it piece by piece. So I'm going to pull this off to the side. Oh, by the way, there's one piece of software that we need to talk about first, and that is Multimon NG. And Multimon NG is a decoder, just like RTL433, but it's designed for um, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of network traffic, but like pagers. Right, so you've got Pogue SAG. So there's your pager, 512 baud, 1200 baud, 2400 baud. There's my flex. So my Motorola flex. Um, these are like, I don't know what these are. You'd have to go research these. Uh, Morse continuous wave, I know. X10, which was like old school packet radio stuff. I know there'll be somebody who's like, it's very modern. I use it today. It's, it's old school packet radio stuff. Um, but, and if you scroll down, they'll like tell you like how to use it. You have to kind of pre-process it and I'll talk you through what this, this big ass command line looks like. Okay. Unfortunately, for you to do this at home, you need to have a signal. You need to find pager traffic for this to actually work. Uh, be, unless you unless you live near me, if you live in Massachusetts, close to Boston, 
then it's not going to be a problem. But probably not. Okay, I'm going to close that. I'm going to put this in the chat. So there you go. That is my big ask command line. I'm going to do it piece by piece. So, oh, one important thing. In order to start streaming my raw audio, I have to actually push the UDP button. So that makes a stream of raw audio that now is, is being streamed to me, okay? And I can capture that with the first part of the my BACL, which is NC. So we use NCAT, just like, you know, true hackers. Uh, and we're going to listen, UDP 732. Five, five. And I'm going to go back here. I'm going to check, make sure that 7355. Okay. I'm still same UDP port. Okay. So I'm going to listen on 7355. And if I do this, nothing yet. That is my audio that's coming through. Okay. So that's cool. That part works. If you don't get any Klingon coming through, then you have a problem with GQRX doing streaming. Like there are only a couple things to mess up. So check your the check that setting. All right, check that setting and make sure you're going to localhost. Um, or you could remote it, send it someplace else. Um, and it's on the right UDP port. Okay. Cool. But I've got there's Netcat, and all it does is it just sets up a listener, it grabs that traffic, and in this case, I didn't tell it anything to do. So it streams it to uh, streams it to standard out and shows me a bunch of a bunch of Klingon. Okay, then what I want to do is pipe it through Sox, and Sox is a it's a sound it's a command line sound processing uh, program. And what we're going to do is we're going to say take raw data, so take the raw sound data, and then. <laughs> There's a bunch of other stuff here. Esign integer this to here. Go. Okay. Oh, and I added an extra blip there. Okay. So what that's going to do is that's going to say use a bit sample, use 16 bit, 16 bit audio, and sample it at the rate of uh, 48,000. Okay. And I'm going to pipe it through. Then it, there's another filter which says Arch. And this thing is getting ugly as we go. OK. Um, and the dash here, the dash says, take it to standard out. And then I added another filter which says, sample it at 22. Uh, 22,050. So it's just like, it's just saying down sample. So get rid of some of the extra data and then up sample and it cleans up the signal. And then at the end of it, we have a dash which says, take it to standard out and then pipe it. So take that output or that, basically we just massage the data stream to grab the audio data out of it because Multimon takes data in. And then we're going to pipe it through Multimon ng. And the type that's coming in is raw. And we're going to add some decoders. And in this case, I want to add scope, which will add a scope so I can actually see activity as it comes across. What did I get a, a lull? Did I get a something? All right. OK. Um, so I add a scope. Oh, okay. Did anyone else get UDP listen needs dash P argument? Um, oh, that might be a different version of, uh, did you give it a dash U and then the port? Is that the right, is that in my QA? Agenda, no. Session, Q and A, nope, nope, nope. I had a flash up, but I, I'm not sure if that was me. NCL dash U dash. Okay, yeah, ch check it. Okay. All right, cool. 
Um, okay, cool. So going back to my multi-mod NG. So multi-mod NG takes input. So it takes either a sound file or something. In this case, we're piping it. So we're using it from standard in. Um, and we want to add a scope. We want to add a decoder, which is, uh, I'm just going to cut and paste here, guys. Uh, Pogzag, da, 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 da. boom, right? So that says, okay, A says, oh, we're going to add a module into this. In this case, we add a decoder for Pogzag 512. We add the Pogzag 1200, Pogzag 2400, add flex. Um, I don't know what dash F alpha, I think that actually gives us ASCII text out. And dash says write it to standard input output. Okay, and I hit return on this thing. And so up here, this thing, this is my scope. So when I receive, you'll see the scope get active. And you'll actually see, you know, here's the weather report, sunny and cooler, mostly sunny. I move this down, move my scope up. You know, sitters, weather report, people's work assignments, going to specific rooms. You'll start to see fun stuff. I was with a guy that I was talking to in um, at DEF CON, and he said he actually grabbed the Pogsack data. He was close to an Amazon. There you go. There's one. Um, um, Here's a patient, uh, patient destination, main lobby, looking for a wheelchair. Um, here's transporters. So here are people who are going to come pick somebody up and take them someplace. Um, okay, hey, we arrived here. Um, give me a call, a unique complex case. Uh, all right, you get all these different things that are coming across. Um, you know, your 130 appointment is checked in. See Epic for a follow up. What's cool is you get these things. So, like lifespan.org, those come across, and actually you can go look and say, oh, who is Lifespan? And you can find out whose exact traffic are you getting. Okay. So, that's pager traffic. Cool. Let's see. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. French hospitals still use pagers. I bet they do. Although, like you see all the stuff that's coming across, right? Oh, there's somebody's uh, PII. Uh, so there's Antonio, date of birth. There's this patient ID, medical records number, which is like your, your um, ID number inside the hospital system. Um, you know, you'll get discharges. Please call me. Um, I've got a patient who's got this problem. It just all like it just keeps going. However, I'm lucky in that I have a major hospital that's next to me. And it's a big hospital. It's it's one of the best, if not the best hospital in the US. And they're always busy doing doing stuff. Um, so some of that's a little bit of a Massachusetts thing. Okay. Now, skills that made this all work. All right. Number one, this streaming here. So the UDP streaming, that helped us. Um, then using and chaining tools together. So we've got this, um, right? Netcat to stand up a listener to grab the traffic. Socks to filter that traffic to make it actually usable um, to get clean up some of the noise and stuff. And then multi-mine, which recognizes it takes that sound file and recognizes and demodulates that pager traffic out in order to spit it out to us in, in ASCII. Okay, cool. So fun thing, pretty cool. The trick for you though, is going to be to get into GQRX experiment with frequencies, find, be able to identify that pager traffic when it comes across, 
And if I'm zoomed way out, right, you'll see see how that looks. It's like it's like a thick line, and you can kind of see there's a left and a right. Um, when you see stuff like that, that's good pager traffic. Tune into the pager traffic and then break it out. Okay. Um, so that's pagers. Pagers, pagers, pagers. Lots of fun. Um, when I discovered this, I was like, oh my God, none of this stuff is encrypted. It's just doing its thing. I do occasionally get some encrypted stuff like this. All right. So I'll get some encrypted stuff occasionally. Um, I'll get other like bigger blocks of stuff like this one. This one's a big encrypted block of stuff. Um, sounds pretty cool when it comes across the radio. But that that actually is encrypted pager traffic. Most of it though is is not. So you get a lot of you get a lot of plain text stuff. Um, but the guy that I was talking to at um, at DefCon, he lives next to an Amazon uh, warehouse. And he's grabbing a lot of, uh, he's grabbing a lot of, um, like warehouse dispatcher stuff, um, using Pogsag uh, traffic. So that's cool. Um, I've also seen some like help desk, IT data center type folks that are using pagers, um, in order to. Uh, um, in order to do like trouble tickets. So sometimes you'll get, hey, I've changed the user's password to this. Can you go relay it to them? Eh. So you'll get things like that sometimes, um, which is an interesting sort of um, pen testing approach to things. So a question from Michael, how did I zoom in? Um, you mean here? Here? You'll have to explain explain yourself. If you want to come off mute, and ask, you can do that too. I don't hear him. Okay, so I don't know what you're asking, Michael. Okay, in G, oh, you zoomed in on the frequency? Yeah, all I do is I just, I just move my mouse. So you see my mouse here, is, I've got this pop-up. I could point at the screen, but you wouldn't see it. Um, but I move my mouse over this frequency strip here, and then I can scroll in and scroll out and change what my what my scope of reference is. Normally, what you do as a um, as an operator is you use as wide of a wide a visualization as possible in order to identify signals, right? So there's a weak signal there. There's another pager there. Um, that I think is a weak one there. There's a really, really weak one there, a weak one there. This one is kind of okay. Um, but yeah, mouse, yeah, it does. So if I mouse over here and scroll, nothing happens. If I'm down here, nothing happens. I have to be over the frequency bar there. And you'll see my mouse changes to a hand when I get there. And once it changes to a hand, then I can then I can use the scroll to zoom in and out. If I go too far up, then it changes back to an arrow and it won't do anything. So it has to be that hand and you scroll in and out. And then also when it's a hand, you can scroll and drag. Okay. All right. So there is that. Next up urge i'm trying to find where are my happy slides okay i moved to my windows around everywhere guys i lost track of who i am okay um so that gives us everything that we did here so we looked at signal identification wiki that gave us some frequencies that we can try um plus um there are other resources that you can do that will tip you off to frequencies like the best one is like nine nine hundred to nine thirty megahertz somewhere in there. Try that and see if you can find find pagers. It's a pretty good place for me. Um, find your frequency, right? So zoom out, right? Zoom out as much as you can. Look to the left and the right. Identify that there's a transmitter there. Move in on the transmitter. Zoom in. 
do a little bit of fine adjustment. I think it's something like that. Um, adjust the width of the signal that you're actually listening to. So it's a very weak one. Um, adjust the width of the signal. So something like that. And then center it. And then, um, and then UDP stream it. Grab it with the big ass command line and pipe it through Multimon NG. Okay. All right. Next one, my grilling. Grilling, grilling, grilling. Then we've got ERT and SCMs. And then we are done. However, it is 1340. Let's take a 10 minute break. Everybody come back at 1350. And we will pick it up from where we're at. Okay, so 1350, I shall see you all then. Awesome. Welcome back, everybody. I am back. I got some class one face stuff because uh, like I'm working, 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 uh, working through lunch. So I got some food. All right. Is anybody having a difficult time so far? Uh, Mike mentioned something in Discord. By the way, Discord, I'm going to start, I'm going to send a couple files in Discord here. No, you're not doing okay or no, you're having a problem. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things um, that Mike mentioned is he found a signal. He found a signal. He started sending it. Remember that inside of GQRX, Urge, let me show everybody here. Pow. I like the screen sharing on this. It, like, the other platforms, it's a lot like it's diff more difficult to set up. It like takes more time. Um, this is like pretty easy. Um, when you uh, set on your frequency, okay, so I say, okay, there's a frequency and I want to tune to it. So I set out wide, find my frequency, center on it, zoom in. Whoops, zoom in, adjust my center. I should have grabbed the thing. Adjust my center there. I adjust my bandwidth to match the signal. And very important, the GQRX here, when it does the UDP streaming, it streams the audio, okay? So what you have to do is go ahead and adjust my volume here unmute myself and i'm going to listen to that sound right and i should be able to hear here's a nice clean sound coming there if that sound is kind of dirty or it has a lot of interference or if you're tuned off frink a little uh, off frequency a little bit or your squelch here is tuned so that uh, you have a lot of a lot of extra interference all that changes the audio quality as it's streamed out to your end cap that's or net cap that's listening there. So the cleaner you can make that signal, the better. So a couple of things that will help you there. Um, one is listen to it, right? Listen to it. When the signal stops, auto like auto squelch it so that it gets rid of that extra, like that noise floor for you. Try the noise blinkers. That's a long burst. Try noise blinker one, see if that, if that helps out. Try noise blinker two, it'll come back on and try it here in a second. Okay, with data, with pages and stuff, try fast automatic gain control. So it'll adjust, automatically adjust the, the volume level. Gain is volume, by the way. Okay, see if that helps out. Um, see if you're exactly on the frequency. So you can actually see in the waterfall if it, if it, if it, the signal goes outside of this lighter area that I'm actually tuned to. I'm gonna close this. Um, then you'll only be getting part of the signal. It won't be as strong or as, as vibrant as it should be. Um, let's see what other things make sure that you're on narrow FM. 
okay, and not anything else. Um, yeah, but just try to clean up that signal as much as you can. If it's still a kind of a dirty signal, you can run through and check your connections on your antenna. Make sure that those are, are seated nicely. Uh, make sure that you have the right antenna, the right antenna length. There are a bunch of different things. I just want to go through as much as you know how to do in order to make that the cleanest, best audio possible to feed through to Multimod NG. Okay. Next one, grilling time. So let's, I'm going to stop this. Um, I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to go do my thing. Okay. Um, hmm. Grilling, because we're all grillers here in VETSEC. Okay, so I've got this thing. It's a TP20. Um, you can see it on my, my photo down here at the bottom. Um, it's a TP20. And what it does is it's Thermo Pro. I've got this thing, which just had, runs the display. Doesn't send any Doesn't send any RF at all. It just receives. And I have this thing that has probes that get plugged into the side here. There's a plug here and a plug here. And it's got on and off button. And it will actually has a display. It flips from probe one to probe two. This thing actually transmits. So the question for everybody, and you're cheating by reading my slides, question for everybody is, how do I figure out what frequency this thing uses? What frequency it transmits on? Okay. Does anybody have a guess? Okay. FCC ID. Yep. Okay. Got it. So we'll we'll get there. Um, I could also just kind of take a guess and say, well, you know, it's probably LPD three one five, so three hundred fifteen megahertz. Or it's LPD 433 or 433.92 megahertz. Most likely that's what it is, right? But I don't know for sure. So, like William said, you could go to the manufacturer. So I could go to Thermo Pro, Thermo Pro, pull down the spec sheet. It might or might not um, list it. The big one is FCC. If you have a device and that device transmits, not receives, but transmits. It has to have an FCC ID license or FCC ID, which is a license. And there's a round of testing that it has to go through. Okay. What's cool is the FCC is the Federal Communications Commission. It is a US government agency that is designed to keep interference, um, keep, well, reduce interference or eliminate interference so that signals that need to get across the air get across the air okay so they're the ones who decide well this frequency is used for radio and police and they issue licenses to the radio and police to use that frequency any device that transmits needs to get tested and they take it into this like big huge faraday cage so it's a it's a room that is lined with metal that has a little electronic charge going through it that radio frequency can't leave the room they take this thing and they set it down to, to next to test equipment and they prove that it only transmits on the right frequency in the right mode. So that's cool. The other cool thing is that if you look a lot of these on the back of them and we'll have to focus here. Oh, it's backwards. My camera is backwards. Anyway, you see right Come on, focus, focus, buddy, focus. Wallowe. Okay, should focus. Damn it, it's right there. It's the the FCC is actually printed on the back of this thing. You gonna do it now? Oh, I did it before. I might be too close. No, it's not gonna participate. Anyway, there's the FCC ID that's listed there. So each device actually has to have, it, if it transmits, it has to have the FCC ID listed on it, OK? Um, now, the FCC website is, it's a US government website. It's a little bit, it was not designed for ergonomics and user experience, OK? Um, so there's 
somebody who made another website that just basically scrapes the FCC ID website. And it's this, it's FCCID.io. And there are a couple others that are out there. Okay. Um, but you can go here and you have the FCC ID. And I have this one. It's actually, right, this is what's labeled on the on the device. Let's see. Uh, oh, now it focuses. Okay, so hang on, hang on, hang on. At least it looks like it focuses. Yeah, you can see it right there. Oh, I brag about it and it stops. Anyway, I'm going to give up. So that FCC ID is printed there on the, like it's right next to the model number. And you can go in and put it into the FCC ID search. So I'll blow this up. Okay. Um, so there's my ID. So 2AI4N, capital I, 4N, is the uh, manufacturer ID for Thermopro. And then TP20 is the model number. Coincidentally, it's the, it's the same as the model number. Okay. And I can search. And you'll see, like, here's a picture of it in the test lab, right? So you see it in the test lab. There it is with the probes attached. You see, sometimes these photos, the testing photos are funny. Um, what's really cool is sometimes they'll pull it apart like this one, and you can actually see, um, you can actually see the radio chip and the circuitry and see how the thing is made, right? There's your little radio chip. Totally cool. But the thing that I really care about and the reason why we use FCCID.io instead of the FCC's website is they make it really easy, right? They make it CTO proof. The frequency range is 433.98 megahertz. Okay? And you got like all these different reports, test reports, um, block diagrams, like all these different things, information about the device. What I really care about is what frequency does it use? What frequency does it use? Um, modulation, if it tells me like, does it use AM, FM, like all of that stuff, eh, that helps out a lot. And then um, um, any other thing that I can use to actually decode it. I mean, I don't see like modulation or anything. So maybe I could do like this and look and find, you know, just, I'm gonna search for ASK, no. Oh. Uh, FSK, no, nope. FSM, nope. Okay, so I don't see any kind of modulation. Uh, mode, find mode, I uh, get model, uh, modulation, nope, and I don't get anything. So it's not going to tell me anything, but I do have the frequency, right? It, it'll list it. Listen right there. Ooh, there's my frequency, 433.98. Awesome. And then if I go back to RTL433 and I go to overview running, it will actually list all of the different device protocols. Okay. Um, or I think I can get it with like dash H, which will tell me. I'll put the version string and exit. That might be it. Um, so let's do like RTL underscore 433 dash, just try just dash V. Nope. Um, dash H. Yeah. Dash H works. Okay. That gives me that. And uh, I forget what it is. There's a way to like show me all these codes, but I don't care because I have their website. So I show all these codes and I just do a search inside, find, and I want to say TP20. Okay. Or I might do like Thermopro, Thermopro, and you'll see I have three hits here. So there's one, there's another one, there's another one. And I know that it's this thing because it's labeled on the back. So I know it's a Thermopro 20. And it uses code 97. That's the important thing that I actually want to do. Okay. And so I can come back and I can use RTL 433 F 433.92M. 
dash R, so big R, I remember correctly, should be, should be, should be, should be, should be, dash R is the device. Yep, that's the decoding protocol. Okay. Uh, so dash R97, which is just that decoder, and bam. Okay. So now it's listening, but I haven't turned the machine on. So I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to turn it on. Wow. Right. And there you go. There's it identifies as a thermopro TP12, which is the same. It's the same coding, right? If you remember this, 97. Here we are. TP08, 12, 20. Totally good. Um, so here's probe one, which is 320. Probe two, which is 320. And the ID of the device is 74. And you see over here, it's cut off, but integrity is CRC. So that's your little um, cyclic redundancy code um, to make sure that it got it all. Okay. And you'll see this thing, like it'll stream, it'll stream, it'll stream. Okay. So that's cool. Right. Skills that we used here FCC research. Whoops. All right, so let's go find what frequency we're on. Um, oh, let's do GQRX. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to control C this so I can run my GQRX. Because you should always like run the decoder, but then also check out the, um, the waveform. Uh, let's go like this. This is going to be close. I'm going to go. Zero this thing out, zero, 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 four, three, three, uh, nine, two, zero, nine, two. Here we go. Okay, and start capturing. And hopefully I can find it. Still running. There we go. See that pulse? Right, and you'll see it hit the waterfall. And I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. There we go, it happened right here. Grab the center, move it over. Oop, a little bit over to the side now. I think that's it. Okay, stop processing so I get so I freeze this in the waterfall because it takes a little while. So I'm gonna change my bandwidth to match it. And it grabs it with AM. AM seems to give me a signal. Okay, if I turn my volume up. Okay. Got it. And it makes one loud pulse. And it does, it's not really spread very wide to the left and the right. And it gives me one solid spike. That is what um, um, amplitude modulation looks like. Okay. Oh, there's somebody there. Yeah. Okay. So I got to tune to the right frequency. Life is good. Um, I can actually go make a capture of it if you come up um which one is it it is this one if i wait a little bit i can actually record here and say record this will actually record all of that radio data and it will make a file that is god awful huge technical terms okay so if i go see this thing um, now i can actually go stop this go here play it okay so i can replay that signal that i just captured which is good and it saves this this, this raw i can actually go to use that raw file hmm <clears throat> 
use that raw file and run it through decoders, right? So I can save the signal that way um, and then go ahead and, and replay it here. GQRX is a little bit picky. It wants this location and the file has to be formatted in this way. So it's like the year, the year, the month, the day, the time, um, the frequency, the uh, width of the signal. Um, I think that's the width of the signal. Uh, when it, it, and then it has to be underscore. So it has to be like all the files have to be this exact format in order for GQRX to be able to actually read it. Otherwise, it pretends it's really stupid. It's like, hey, who is this? I don't know this. Um, hang on, I have to respond to something. Um, okay, so a question here that I got in chat was, um, that I have an rtlsdr.com. So they're another company. Uh, so rtlsdr.com. Maybe it'll show up. They're in a different, uh, I think there's a dash in there. Hang on. Add a dash. There's another SDR that's rtlsdr.com. And if you actually go look in their uh, store, they make these these tuner dongles, they use the same chip, right? You'll see it somewhere in here. Probably that one, might be that one, it might be that one. Um, but they use the same radio chip. So yeah, like all this, all the software works, uh, works, but there are fake ones that are out there that people are, people are trying to sell them. Okay. And you do definitely want the, um, yeah, right. Same chip, same chip. There's only one chip that anybody else uses. It has that RTL 2832U that's inside of it. Okay, cool. Hang on, let me catch up on chat. Dun, dun, dun. So I heard some going like static, Z Wave devices. <laughs> All right, good job, Mike. All right. Who is. Um, Asinine Dervish, whoever they are, they got some PII in their pager traffic. Good. I like to see that. Okay. So going back here, back on, back on schedule. Um, you can save the IQ data. You can replay the IQ data. IQ data is the raw, the raw stream of bits coming off the radio. And that is saving it up here. So you can save and you can, right? You can save and you can play. Um, there's that. This save down here, so the record here, this records the data as a wave. So if I say, where am I going to record it to? Uh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. And if I say, play, right, start capturing, record. Make sure my, okay, so there's my little data burst. That will actually record the data. You'll see down here, GQRX, da, 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 da. same kind of format, but it saves it as a wave. So that will save the sound that's coming out of GQRX. Now, the difference here is if I record up here, it records a lot of data. It records the whole data stream, including the other stuff that I'm not listening to. The wave is at least processed and minimized a little bit, but it might not work. It, it might lose things. It's lossy. So it might not have all of the signal that I actually want to listen to. Okay. I'm going to mute you because, ah, uh, okay. So we got that. Okay. Um, and then we have our capture here. Now, um, there are a bunch of other things that we can do here. Um, if you are in, 
the Discord. I'm going to share a couple files here. Upload a file. I have to figure out where I'm at here. Uh, home. Um, IQ data. I'll sh I'll work everybody through this so you'll be good. And I've got e let's see tp20 open. Okay, so I sent this to um, sent this to Discord. Okay, so here you are inside of Discord, um, and I sent tp20.zip. That is a bunch of tp20 data that I've actually captured. So if I go cd tilde slash IQ recordings, uh, TP, TP, okay. Um, I recorded a whole bunch of things and I'll show you how to do that, okay. Um, but I took all of these, so what, like a couple of recordings. It's not a very big file. I saved it and then I just zipped it up and I sent that. I'm gonna send one more here, um, which we will use later. Uh, IQ recordings, ERT. Okay. Okay. So the second one, we'll do the second one. That's actually my, my, um, I think it's my power meter. It's either my power meter or my gas meter. It's one of those. Okay. Uh, but we'll play with those. So that gives us some signals that we can go mess around with. Now, ugh, I have to remember how to do this. Um, you can run RTL433. 433 um, on these files, and they have a CU8 extension. You'll actually see, so this is sample one, and then you have sample two, and then sample three, sample four, and these were recorded on 433.92 megahertz, and the sample rate was 250 samples per second, and the CU8 is, it's 8-bit, it's, um, Right. If you think of the data stream, it's an 8-bit data stream. How about that? Let's just keep it simple. It's an 8-bit data stream Okay, um, that is coming across. And so you can store these natively. If I do maker temp, cd temp, ls. Okay, so I can run my RTL-433 again. So RTL-433 frequency 433.92. Looking for code 97, which is my thermostat dash capital S known. Okay. So what that will do is anytime, well, I'll show you. Anytime it grabs a data burst and it recognizes the data burst and is able to um, decode that data burst, it will save a recording of it. Okay. So here I am. I'm waiting. It'll take a couple seconds, right? So here, it identified the device, identified the stuff, and it saved it to this particular uh, G whatever, whatever, whatever dot CU8. Okay. So here's another one, and now it's G02, da -da, CU8. So that's what I did. Okay, RM dash RF, uh, TP. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I did in order to get these files that are here. But you can still operate on those files, which is cool. And that's part of what RTL433 was designed to do. You can do an analyze on them. And I have to use a cheat sheet because they're different. Uh, and I think I have to give it a file, which is dash R. OK, so I do RTL underscore 433 dash R G zero zero. Whoops. How do I get a capital? Uh, zero zero tab. Whoops. One tab. Okay. So I'm going to read that file and okay. So it recognizes that data burst. So it can read it off of a file. Cool. Next thing that I want to do is I want to um, analyze this thing. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to put a big A. OK, 
Okay. Well, let's do, yeah, let's do big A. Big A is, is more accurate. Okay. And it will tell me like a bunch of stuff, right? Um, but this is cool. So it says, okay, I have a total count of pulses. So this thing's amplitude modulation. So it's on off keying probably um, or something similar. So how many how many symbols were there? And the symbols are one or z ones or zeros. Um, like what? How wide were they by uh, milliseconds or nanoseconds? Um, you know, take a guess at what it is. I'm gonna guess it's pulse position modulation with fixed pulse width. Um, you know, here are the different signals that came across. Yeah, but it it at least like tries to guess how that particular signal is encoded. That's kind of cool. Now, if you go into, if you really want to nerd out, you go into RTL433 on GitHub. Ooh, ooh RTL underscore 433. Okay. Come on now. There we go. Okay. If you look at this RTL 43D, this is the source code repo for it. And it has like all the same things that are in the that are in the website um, that will tell you. But if you look here under I believe source devices, you'll have all of these different devices and you'll have C code. So if I go down to probably a T, because it'll be give me either Thermapro, Thermapro TP12.C. Okay, this is actually the what that particular sequence looks like. So that way, and what the breakout is, and all of that stuff, and then the actual C code that will grab it all. Okay, so uh, I'll go back here. If you really want to go crazy, you can do that. They also have flex decoders. There's a bunch of other things. It was really designed to be this kind of this framework that then you could add in different decoder modules. And the, de the software gets smarter and smarter at decoding things over time. Okay. Um, but the one big thing that I'm interested in right now is being able to actually go in and save all of those signals. There's another thing that you can do, CD um, make, make der temp, CD temp, okay, is you can do RTL433 dash S unknown. And what it will do is it'll go out and it'll find all the unknown signals that it can find, and it will save samples of those. So now you have a bunch of different samples that you don't know what the heck they are, um, but you can go play with them and, and break them down and analyze them. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let me get back on back on my agenda here. Okay. What do we do? Well, we researched my device, find what frequency it's on, looked at uh, the signal inside of GQRX so we can hear that data pulse. We can record it a couple of different ways inside of GQRX. We fired up RTL433. We grabbed it with, um, uh, we, we recorded signals. We were able to read signals off of, um, off of our uh, uh, recorded files, both as a capture and we could do it with, uh, we could replay it um, also from GQRX. Um, the trick with running GQRX with a, um, um, running GQRX over the network using NCAT to pipe it through RTL433, I think that also works. I think that also works, uh, but it's a lot easier because RTL four three three already has its controller built into it. Okay, um, and then MQTT, which we talked about before, you can take that that thermostat and dump it into MQTT, and then have other 
client programs that access that MQTT. Okay. Cool. That is my thermostat. And I'm going to turn this dude on. Okay. Let's see. One more thing, and then we will be at the end of class. We've got like 35 minutes left. Let's crank through this. And the last thing that I want to do is ERT. ERT is, um, it's the encoder, encoder receiver transmitter. This makes no sense to anybody. What it actually is, is your power meters. They have something called a SCM. And an SCM is a standard consumption message. It basically says, here's what your utility usage is. And it was designed so that you could have a car. So instead of the meter reader, like when I was a kid, they'd come to your house. They, you'd had a meter on the outside of the house, and it had an analog dial. And they would read that and write it down, and then go to the next house, and the next house, and the next house. They don't do that anymore. What they do is they have an electronic meter that reads, and then it sends a radio signal. And they can drive by with their car kind of slow, and it grabs all of the signals and just stores them. It just does like data collection so that that meter reader, all they have to do is kind of drive around, and it grabs all of the data. The standard consumption message is what Basically, what, um, um, how much stuff did you use? <laughs> like, what is your meter reading? That's literally all it is, right? Consumption is usage. Okay. So, for these things, we have a couple pieces of software. Where do I have it? This thing. Um, this is, uh, no, that's multi mon ng. Ah, no. I don't have RT Lamer up. Okay, hang on just a second. Let me load it up. Um, where are you at? RT Lamer. Okay. RT Lamer. I don't know how, if that's how it's pronounced. But this is a decoder for these. And so let me throw that into chat here. <laughs> See, I like how Michael thinks. See, he's on the right wave, the right wavelength. Um, pun intended there. Like, yes, there's another thing that we can go mess with. Um, and in this case, what we've got um, is this thing. You have to like build it with GoLang, a bunch of things. I'm gonna use it. I have it actually built. Um, you have to actually set up a Go environment and some other things. Um, but I just want to use it to find the frequency. Why? Because RTL433 already does what I want it to do. Okay. And so they've got um, a neat little trick. There's a command line program that allows you to run um, a remote control SDR without using GQRX. And it's just this RTL TCP. And it does exactly what you might think it does. It does RTL underscore TCP. Okay. And it actually, so, okay, it found my device. It actually set it up on, um, uh, set up a listener at TCP um, on the loopback address on port 1234. And so I can take another program here. And I can run it against that, and it'll, it'll give me that remote control. So just like in GQRX, I have that turn on the remote control option. This just runs from a command line. So you can script it, or you can run it at startup time. You can do a bunch of stuff. And then I just want to do RT, lame, or I run it. So you'll see what it does. It goes, it says, oh, OK, I found, I found something, and it's at 912.6. Here, I'm going to control C it. Okay. Um, so it said, okay, I found I found um, some of this standard consumption message traffic, and it's at 912, uh, 912.6 megabits. Unfortunately, this uses it uses frequency hopping and some other stuff, so it doesn't 
it doesn't look that cool inside of GQRX, but let's give it a, or I haven't been able to grab it with GQRX, so hang on. Uh, where is my GQRX? I'm sorry to run out of steam, folks. I've been talking for too long. Okay. Um, so I want to zero-wise my offset. And then I want 916. 916.2? 912.6. Okay. 9. Nine one two six zero zero. Okay, and then I want AM. I'm pretty sure it's narrow FM, but let's capture it. Yeah, let's mute you. Right, and I've yet to be able to actually see this signal. Um, let me actually go back here and look at my ETR because what I like about this and why this is why this is a fun one for me um, is that the message itself is very it's very it's very formatted and it's a small message so I can grab it so it's okay which should be am so let me go back here I'm gonna switch it to am. but I think it uses frequency hopping, so I'm not sure that it's going. And there's enough of it, I should be able to see it, and I don't. So I think it's just because it uses frequency hopping. So I'm gonna kill this off, okay? Um, but it looks like this. So you've got all of this stuff, data rate, sample rate, all of that stuff. You have this thing called a preamble, okay? And a preamble is when a radio turns on, they don't know what speed they're operating at, right? It's like, hey, are you using the same clock as I am? Probably not. So you'll see this a lot when the when it turn device turns on, it gives you this one 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 one. So it goes on off on off on off on off, and then the receiver uses that and it says, oh, I can judge what speed you're on. So when you see one 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 one. At the beginning of a message, that's a good thing, okay? And then you, what you'll see here is, here is the ID, that's the meter ID. Type is, um, you know, one of these is gas, one of these is electric. Um, it hasn't been tampered with. And consumption over here, this was the usage. And then here is a code, that's your, um, that's your cyclic redundancy check, okay? But, these are very, very structured. Now, if I go make a thing here, this is what we're going to do. Uh, okay, da da rm dirt temp cd dot dot ls uh, cd ert. And I gave you this zip file, ert.zip. I put it in Discord. You can grab it. So even if you can't find a um, power meters around you, you can grab my power meter and read my power meter data, okay? This is important because we're going to crack these open and actually look at the signal, okay? So we want to go CD ERT, LS. I'm going to make something. I've got a pretty good sample of these, but I'm going to make a directory temp, CD temp, LS, boom. I'm in a brand new clean directory so I can destroy it if I want, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run R. I'm going to look for ERT. And I know ERT doesn't happen. What I want to find is find uh, SCM. There you go. ERT standard consumption message, which is 149. There's also a 154. And I believe I can give it multiple thingies. But I want to try the... This one first, so 149. So we do RTL underscore 433 dash big R. Um, ah, 149. 149 dash F. 
So what frequency I wanted to run on, and I'm going to use uh, 912.6M. Honestly, because it's such a spread spread frequency, I'm I can find it on 915. So if you want to just give this a try and try it blind, try like 915 and see if you can get some traffic. Um, but 912.6M for megabits. And bam, hey, we're listening. And if it works, I'll come up with stuff like immediately. Or I should. Yep, there we go. OK. So this is the RTL433 output. Like, we've seen that before. OK, so I'm going to control C that. Cool, I know I can grab some signals. And now what I want to do is store them as uh, no. Okay. And so. I will do this and share this with everybody. Copy, drop it into chat here for everybody. Um, and I got RT Lamer. Get that, that, that. Okay, cool. And gonna bam away at it. You grab some signals and you'll see, oh yeah, like yeah, it's writing, it's writing, it's writing, it's writing. Okay, and I'm going to control C out of there. Okay, now, one thing I want you to remember here, preambles, preambles. So it looks like 11111, right? Now I've got a bunch of data, and if I do just an LS here, like I've stored some data files. I shared data files with you all. You could do it. It works just as well with um, 9115M C. It'll take a second, but I'm still pulling up ERTs. I didn't try this other one. There is 154. I don't know if I have any of these around. We'll find out here shortly. Yep. Woo, cool. I have these guys too. Um, and there are a couple others that were that show up here. Um, so here, here are a couple others. I wonder how many total ERT. About ten references. Oh, that's alert, invert, convert, hertz, convert, intertechno. I don't know. There's my center. So there are three three different decoders that are in here. Um, for ERT messages, right? And you can grab them. I think you can do multiple just by listing them and giving, separating them by comments or yeah, comments by um, commas. Can be used multiple times. Okay, so I go like this. Um, Dash R one four five dash R. My other one was uh one four five no well, one four nine one four nine one six zero one six one. 160 R161. I thought I had 149154. 149154. Okay, 149154. Boom, right? And now I grab like all of the ERT stuff and right, chucking through. Okay. Like it's pretty good. Pretty busy. The part that I really care about, I go up. This is the stuff that I gave you all. I'm going to remove dash RF uh, TMP. Boom. OK. So now I have all these capture files that are here. Time to go use Universal Radio Hacker. And URH is basically understanding. It was built to do a whole bunch of stuff. But it's really understanding and being able to break out that message into the bits. So you start this thing up. It does have a caveat, which is it's a pretty rough interface. Right? 
But if you have the 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 zip file that I gave you in um, in Discord, you can download that. You can um, unzip it, and you'll end up with all of these files that I have here. So what uh, 11, 11 different captures of that standard consumption message. Okay, so I'm going to go do file. You can create a project if you want. I'm just going to open some stuff. And I'm going to go to documents here. Um, I put it in IQ data or IQ recordings. ERT. Here I have G001. I'm going to load that up. Okay. And so what do you see here? Well, you see here is a message. And you'll see this is the static or the carrier wave. We turn on the radio. Okay. And down here, you want to put it in analog so you can see this. And then you'll see this thing right here, which is, that's actually my little data pulse. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click and drag, just select, right? Select that. I'm going to do a right click and say crop to selection. Okay. All right. So there's my little... There's my radio waves as it comes across. There's my noise as it comes across. Um, there's this thing here to auto detect parameters. And so I want it amplitude shift kinks, right? Because I has that, um, just a guess, because I know ERT and it says that it was on off keying and other stuff, okay? Um, noise is like, what's this threshold? So you see the stuff in pink? Anything that's in pink is going to be treated as it's just, static okay um center is how high do we want to actually take the signal and i'll show you that in a second um samples per symbol is how many milliseconds are there or how many samples of of radio data is there in each symbol and i'll show you what those look like and then the rest of it is okay so just hit auto detect for the time being then you come down here and change it into demodulated so that is, give me the signal. And it starts to look like this. That's cool. This thing right here, that is where your signal starts. So you move that, and it's the center. So that's where the center of your signal is at. Okay. So I want to move it and say, and you'll actually see on the right-hand side over here, as I move this down, you see how I have 1 is above and 0 is below. So if I go up here and say, OK, this is something like that. So below these signals, this is on. So this is a 1, a 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, or maybe 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. You can actually, you can actually read this thing. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, and you'll actually see down here, you have this one zero, right? So one zero is there. You can highlight these, and then you have one zero, and then one zero, and then one zero. Okay, that's actually the encoding and how it works. And they just, it's it's on off king, so they turn the radio on and then they turn it off, and then they turn it on, and they turn it off, and that's how they send the signal. Okay, so that's cool. So, right, what did we do to get here? We loaded up a signal, and I'll do it again. Open, and I'm going to load up number two, because the more data I have, the better it is for the software to actually be able to determine the pattern. So I'm going to open up a signal, and here I have two that's loaded up. And I'm going to see where my signal is. It's right here. I'm going to select here to here. Right click it, crop to selection. There it is. That's a pretty noisy one, though. Not as clean as it should be. Um, I'm going to auto detect parameters and it lied. I got a button that says failed to auto detect parameters. Why? Because I'm going to change it to ASK. Auto detect now is good. Change it. Hang on. My radio URH has crashed on me. Yep. All right, kids. I'll be. Oh, there we go. Nope. I got a number over here. Okay. ASK. 
Oh, it can't auto detect because the there's too much noise. So I'm going to change it to ASK, put it demodulated, zoom in a little bit. That's a trash signal. I'm going to kill that one. Try it again. File, open, scrap three, open. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Grab from here to here, right click, crop to selection. OK, starts to look good. Still a little bit quiet, but that's OK. Um, change it to ASK, auto detect it. Nope, can't auto detect it. I'm going to steal everything from up here. So I'm going to say my samples. I'm going to say 30. Um, error tolerance, bump that down a little bit. Um, change it to demodulated. It looks like that. That's not good. I want these like big flat things up here, and I'm not seeing them. So let me kill that one. Yes. OK, let me kill this one, and I'll redo it. So we're going to run out of time if I keep doing this. Okay, open. I'm going to open one. There it is. Good, strong signal. What I'm looking for is the difference between this carrier here that, that's turning on or all this noise and then the actual signal, right? And highlight that, right click, crop to selection. Make sure it's on ASK. Detect parameters. So that will fill out the samples per, samples per signal and some bunch of other stuff. Um, then I change to demodulated. So I see this is my signal. And I can actually see down here we're starting to get things that look interesting. 1010 one, zero is also good. 111 one, one is very good. Okay. Um, and what there's a reason why they actually encode the data on top of it, but we won't get into that just yet. Adjust my signal here. So anything that's in that pink is going to be a one. Anything that's in green is going to be a zero. I'm pretty happy. And I think there's one, uh, spectrogram isn't going to do anything. There's spectrogram here, but that gives you like a heat map. Eh, not as exciting as it could be. I like demodulated. And if you start to see this, like one zero one zero one zero one zero, that's good. That tells me something. And you remember here in my thingy, I want to find one 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 zero zero one zero. This is called a preamble. That's basically this is your clock sync. So I'm going to give you pulse, 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 pulse. Adjust your time as the receiver based on that. And then I'm going to give you this thing. This thing is, oh, hey, this is a standard ERT consumption message to follow. Boom. And then it has the data. So if I see that, that's a good, good thing. Now I'm going to go up here to this next tab, analysis. And you'll see one zero, one zero, one zero. Starts to look good, but there's this thing called um, encoding. And in this case, what they do, Perch, Manchester 2, um, is they go one, one, zero is a one. Zero, one is a zero. <laughs> okay, so, so these combined. So one, zero. Um, because you have a pulse and then it goes down. So pulse down is a one. Pulse up is a zero. Okay. So you'll see this. Urch. I have to go this way. Boom. 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 Like that. Okay. So. Um, so this is called Manchester encoding. It's basically how do you get it onto the carrier. And so um, you see this non-return to zero. So it starts out, so it's, oh, that's inverted here. Non-return to zero. So it starts with a one and then a zero. That's a one. Okay. Um, zero, one, that's a zero. And so it, it's just a way of encoding it because it's across the radio. So you have to be able to say, Oh yeah, this pattern is a one and this pattern is a zero. So you'll have a lot of redundant characters. Short answer here is for our protocol, we can go to Manchester two and I get this nice 
awesome snazzy one 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 zero zero one zero one zero one zero and if we go look here right so i've got one 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 there's my there's my clock and then i have zero zero one zero one zero da, da, da. and then a bunch of zeros i don't know how many one two three four five one two three four five so something like that don't quote me on this but that's my preamble so that's here's my clock and then standard consumption message to follow so that means that anything from here out is going to actually be the data that was in that signal and if we look at the description right here for ERT, right? And I'll put this in the chat. This is going to be our last thing. This is kind of the top level stuff, right? Is you can actually look at this and say, okay, here is, here is my preamble. I've got that. And then I have my... Here's my preamble, and then here is my highest two bits of serial meter serial number, and then a space, and then physical tamper. So is the where that's set to. Here's the type, right? All of these things that you see right here. Type five, the and the consumption, and then the CRC, right? And it's all formatted it out, but you can break it out. So the process for understanding these things is you load up multiple. You take a look at these and you see, oh, yeah, these all start the same kind of thing. They all start the same way here. And the software will actually detect that pattern and then say, okay, cool. You are all of these packets that we got start with the same thing. So that must be the preamble. It must be the clock and the preamble. And it'll set that up and it will, it will, um, if, let's see if it does it. No, it's not going to do it on there. Um, it will actually identify all that for you. And then everything to the right of that is going to be the actual payload. Okay. A little bit crazy. You have to play with it. Play with my ERT meter data that I gave you. Play with my, actually, we could do this one. Let's load up and go open. And let's go here. Let's go to my TP20. And it's going to be cleaner data because it was right here next to the antenna. So here we go. Okay. So here's a carrier. Here's a signal. So I want to grab that signal. Right click. Crop to selection. There it is. You see one, one, one. That looks pretty crazy there. There's a lot of stuff. Um, it's ASK, auto detect. Now it starts to clean up a little bit. Look at it, what it's demodulated as. Grab my center, pull my center up a little bit. Totally cool. And so now you see I got zero, 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 and then all of that stuff coming. Go into analysis. Well, let me load up another one. File, uh, open. This one. There it is. Grab the data. Right click, crop to selection, uh, change it to ASK, auto detect parameters, change it to demodulated, grab my center, move it up. Nice, good, clean signal. You see, I've got one zero, one zero, 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 looking pretty good. Analysis, I'm gonna come back here. I'm going to say NRZ, which is probably not, probably try like Manchester 1. That's pretty good. I got a lot of ones there at the beginning, but then it, the signal goes away. So I'm trying NRZ, NRZ inverted. That gives me 1, 1. That looks pretty good. So I get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. And maybe differential. No, no, I think it's not energy and invert. Analyze it. Okay. And so it says is, okay, this is sync or preamble. There's preamble. Then it's sync. 
it didn't really kind of grab it but if i had enough packets enough packets enough samples it would be able to automatically tell what the what the what's message what's preamble what's clock um, all of that stuff and then later on if you get good at this you can go in and you can generate messages based on the rules you can go in you can simulate it run it through a simulator but it's really designed for this kind of breaking it down seeing the ones and zeros um, and then analysis to figure out what that particular packet looks like and breaking down the protocol okay that is where we are at for today right so things we went through i mean what didn't we go through we set up an environment we did tuning find a frequency tune to the frequency um you know navigate around inside of gqrx we grab some traffic um with rtl 433 just sampling different frequencies we then switch to um decoding pagers we then went to decoding um my um, barbecue thermostat so being able to specifically look for a particular device identifying a frequency tuning to that and then we started to grab some of the um, standard consumption messages and play around a little bit there's a lot more world there in understanding what that actual protocol looks like so we've got five minutes left how's everybody doing anything that didn't make sense which is could happen um anything that didn't make sense anything else that you all would like to see i think i have a okay all right cool all right folks um having said that you got about four minutes until yeah i know this is this is my problem michael i do not have enough time in my life to just mess around with this stuff because it is so cool but now you all have the tools at least to get up and operational and being able to explore the signals that are around you all right books or resources that is a fantastic fantastically good question um Yes, I have a couple nerdy, very nerdy books. Um, RTLSDR.com has a lot of stuff. It is, um, it is, um, it's a blog. It's a blog for like, what's new? What are people working on? That's cool. There were two books that I got from Amazon. And if I look, I have to go through uh, SDR um, books. There was a series that I went through that I was like, oh, OK, this is kind of cool because it takes you through Okay, this series here, hang on. Uh, I think that is the URL. So hang on, hang on. Okay, um, I went through this series of books.